Ghosties, good morning. Happy Monday. Um, Hannah Ryder on February 29th posts on the Facebook group, hey, what's the craziest place you've ever listened to a Ghost Runners episode? People said stuff like, in my deer stand, uh, while in labor, uh, hauling liquid hog manure. Just things that you would say to those kind of things. Uh, and so I thought, what if we made a bingo card of places that you should, crazy places you should listen to the Ghost Runners and see if anybody gets bingo. Okay. Um, so I'll go ahead and start with uh, at the bowling alley. Oh, wow. <laughs> okay, so these are like non-traditional places to like try and like knock off. A few of them. I mean, well, let's, okay. let's get, a, let's okay, get a, okay. a mix. <laughs> Mowing the lawn. Good. That would seem doable. Oh, yeah. Yeah, as long oh, yeah. as you don't outsource but it. But seasonal, so. <laughs> but seasonal. Yeah, yeah take yeah. advantage when you can. Um, let's just go ahead and say at church. I'm not saying oh, wow. during church. Okay. <laughs> I'm just saying in the building. Church park. Okay, church parking lot would not count. Property, property, premises. church property, yeah. church property, <laughs> church property. Okay, uh, I'm gonna go a little tougher here. Downhill skiing. <laughs> Put that one in the corner. You know, like, <laughs> yeah, that one's. You don't really need to go for that one. Downhill ski. Can you imagine cross country skiing right now and be like, "Dang it! Ah, ah, <laughs> well, why did he differentiate ah. it like that?" <laughs> uh, I'm just gonna say this. Let's just say, um, in a blue state. Okay. <laughs> just, just in general, I feel like we got a lot of, a lot of red state people this listening. Is like the toughest one on the yeah. <laughs> people like, I'd rather go down. People in skiing. Texas are like, I don't yeah, know where I'm going to go. Skiing was that. fine, but yeah. Uh, I'm going to go while bench pressing. <laughs> okay. I mean, yeah, a lot of yeah. people do it while working out. Running's yeah. easy, right? <laughs> do it forty uh, more no, times. Not machine pressing either. I'm talking free weights here. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. With a spot. Be okay. Safe. Just while you're hitting your PR and like you just start laughing. And so <laughs> we're just endangering people. It helps. Let's just go. This is a uh, vague in the pouring rain. Okay. <laughs> in the pouring rain. All right. It could be inside in the pouring rain in your car while, you know, your, okay. your rain. I like that. I'm going to, I'm going to go with while horizontal. Okay. Okay. You'd be laying Planking. in bed. Yeah. You could be some kind of zero gravity stretching machine. <laughs> oh, you could, you could double up bench pressing and horizontal. Yeah, so that, yeah, kind of a free space. Yeah, you get one, you get two on the second <laughs> row there. I think about that. Yeah, legs yeah, have this, to be off the yeah. ground though. The, this this horizontal row right here seems like it's in play for some people <laughs> out there. <laughs> New Hampshire, Vermont. <laughs> um, let's see. Okay, next, I'm going to say, um, hmm, let's go with. Timon, what were you going to say? Um, <laughs> Let's go in, in a waiting room. In a waiting room is good. Nice. Um, Let's go at a trampoline park while bouncing. Say it, put it all down there. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Here, here, here. Wait, wait. Bouncing. Yes, bouncing at, at a, trampoline. a trampoline park. Good. Good. Rebounding. Okay. Um, Let's see what else. On horseback. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, on horseback. <laughs> you would, Timon. <laughs> Timon uh. classic. Um, I'm trying to think. Not just while doing chores. I think a specific chore. Let's go dusting. <laughs> Next one. Taking a bath in the dark. <laughs> that's something you're going to have to be intentional about. Taking a dark bath. Taking a dark <laughs> bath. <laughs> that's you're a slightly different like, description. You're going to be like, uh, I listen to it in the bath sometimes. I got to turn off my light so I can get bingo. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only one you don't have to send a picture of you doing it. Uh, you don't have to prove that one. <laughs> well, if it's dark, I no, can't see anything anyway. Uh, <laughs> too risky. Be yeah. careful. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's see. While shaving. Okay. I was about to say haircut. So while okay. shaving. While shaving. While uh, shaving. Getting a like public haircut. That'd be interesting. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to slip. Slip these in while you give me my little scissors and scotch. <laughs> scissors and scotch. <laughs> um, let's see. What else can we do? I mean, I was going to say while assembling a bulletin board. Mm, maybe that was too, maybe a little too easy. <laughs> um, <laughs> How about just while like assembling like furniture or something? Assembling. Assembling. Just yeah, while assembling. Just assembling. While assembling. <laughs> while assembling. <laughs> People are going to so stretch like, that out. At church or... Like oh, yeah, yeah, if you're yeah. Assemblies of God, yeah, that could be. <laughs> I meant more like assembling physical things. I, I know. Yes. Yeah. You're just being, you're just being, <laughs> being goofy. Very funny. Being weirdo. <laughs> okay, last one. Um, let's think. While 
Yeah. While wearing <laughs> fill in the blank. Um it's a, a scarf. Lips. While wearing a scarf. While wearing a scarf. All right. It's gonna be tough to do that and Seasonal. mow the lawn. So <laughs> go for one or the other. They're on different columns. All right. Time's gonna post that on our Facebook group. Um and we're gonna go from there with it. So hope you guys enjoy. Get bingo. It's uh, Monday. Let's make it happen. Uh, uh-oh, ooh, I, ooh, I think this tight beat means that it's going down With some random thoughts and white meat too Midwest best friends eating fast food on repeat So come along, let's have some fun and go ahead Get on your feet, cause it's the Ghost Brothers Podcast Every Monday morning we're taking Welcome back, Ghosties, to the best podcast community on the internet that we know of. Gotta be. Gotta be. Uh, last week, I believe, is when we talked about uh, signs of a psychopath and uh, had a lot of fun uh, really taking a lot of the weird things you guys did. Uh, two things I have to say from this. One, uh, you know, last week's episode, my dad called in the middle of it and we got to talk about our similar psycho behaviors. We have this weird foot thing and balance thing and couldn't believe it was genetic. And then when that episode comes out, my sister texts me. It says, I'm listening to the Signs of Psychopath episode, and I do the exact same thing as you with feeling imbalanced if my right foot steps on more cracks than my left. But I can't even it out just by stepping on another crack. It has to be the exact same part of my foot that hits the crack. Whoa. And I was like, I can't believe this. Of course. Like, that makes so much <laughs> sense. Like, not, not every step is created equal. It's like, it's how much of your foot goes over the crack. And <laughs> this is so cool. It really is like that. I was like, do you also, like, shoot lines, like, out of your feet? And she goes, can't say I do that one. <laughs> I was like, oh, You're okay. like, yeah, 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 yeah. I was having a moment with my sister there for a second. Dang but. it, one too many, one too many. <laughs> Freak. Wait, remind me what that one means again? I had never, ever talked about it. Oh, you haven't? <laughs> I was like, you said, you said my something, sister, I could talk to her about it. You said something one time, I can't remember, it was something similar to that. Maybe I did say it before. but Maybe yeah. it was like as you're driving or whatever. Yes, you're right. Like okay. if I'm riding in a car or something, it's like I'll like barely like put my foot down and it's like... I mean, this is just one of those weird things. Everybody does. <laughs> Everybody does it. Like when your foot goes down, uh-huh. it immediately shoots out a line, like a, a like perpendicular to where you're looking. Okay. So horizontally shoots out a line. Oh, perpendicular. Perpend- yeah, exactly. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. Interesting. Like so you're, not you're, directly. Point, your toe is pointing this way. It's yeah. You're like, making a cross basically. Yes. Okay. With where my foot is facing and where the lines go out. Okay. So the line will go out. So if it's my right foot, it shoots out to my left. So like the big, t- it goes off big toe side. Oh, oh really? So. And I try to nail it with the power lines. So I'm trying to hit yes. power lines when I when my foot steps down. Do you That's think a big thing. A lot of sh- <laughs> shooting out lines with my feet, and also a lot of imagining skateboarders grinding on power yes, lines. That too. was that was like I was I was about to say like, do you think it's because we grew up in a generation of video games? <laughs> I don't know. Like, do you think people older than us did that? Like, had that kind of imagination of like, I could. I could hit power lines with my feet right now. <laughs> I could I could grind on that. I could grind on anything. Tony Hawk makes you be able to grind on anything. I don't know. I was just t- talking to Rachel, I think Sunday night, maybe. I don't know what night it was. Uh, but we were just, maybe it was yesterday, we were just chilling and didn't really have anything to do. Didn't have volleyball, didn't have plans. We were just sitting. We'd both gotten done with our runs. We were just sitting there. And we were not on our phones, just kind of staring at each other. <laughs> and I was like, you know, if we had lived even... 90 years ago, this is all we would do. <laughs> and every every married couple before that, this is all they did. They just sat around and stared at each other. <laughs> I was like, what would you... There's no we, books. What would you be yeah. doing? Yeah, I know. Then Rachel made a good point. She's like, oh, I'd be reading or I'd be, oh, I'd be cooking for you. That's what Rachel said. Oh, I'd be knitting and I'd be I'd be slaving away for you. I was like, what would I be doing? So, uh, we never really figured out. You'd be hunting. I, I said I'd if it, if it truly was ninety years ago I'd be listening to the radio. Let's see, ninety years ago was what nineteen thirty something. Good thirty I'm, something. <laughs> four. Sorry, <laughs> <laughs> I'm so bad with like mental math with with forever with years. Well, that was good. Ninety was the hard part. What? Oh, or like you know, like knowing which uh, the thirties, knowing the thirties yeah, would have yeah, been yeah, the hard yeah. part. Well, yeah, I knew the nineteen part for sure. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I'm for whatever reason, like with somebody's like I'm seventy five. What year was I born? It would take me two minutes to figure that out. How many? What year was somebody seventy five born? Seventy five, so almost fifty, so forty nine. Okay, I believe you. Yeah, <laughs> I think probably forty nine. That's good. Yeah, I have a hard time. I don't know, Hatt- Hattie. I'm learning Hattie's having a lot harder time subtracting than adding. Maybe yeah, it's it is a little thing. more of a step up. I would yeah. say. But so I've tried to teach her like you can do it in reverse. So I, because I was like, 
30 minus 18. What is that? She's like, I don't know, dad. <laughs> I'm like, okay, what's eight, 18 plus what equals 30? Yeah, a little Still, algebra. Yeah, trying very to. Very simple get, algebra. Get in there, so. The other uh, psychopath thing I wanted to follow up on. So there was one person. So no profile picture on Facebook because I think she knows she's a psycho. She's <laughs> hiding behind anonymity. Anonymity. Well, maybe her name's Anna, though. I, Anemone. She's, she's Nemo. Yeah, she's hiding behind yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anemone. <laughs> her name is first name Bell, last name the Mast. Oh. Bell of the Ball. Yeah, Belfast. Bell Mast. Uh, Saying her psycho. Instead of using a planner or the phone's calendar, I just type the date and time into Google and keep the tab open until the event passes. Yeah, I saw that. That was the, the wildest one That's, That's, yeah, that we've that, seen. That's the silliest thing I've ever heard. <laughs> I type the date and time into Google. So do you think she has like multiple uh, like tabs or do you think it's one oh, definitely. Yeah. Google search? Okay. No, I think it's, it's a wild amount of tabs for every event she has. <laughs> What are you doing Thursday? Uh, let me see. Just a second. Hold on. I got to go into. Uh, <laughs> Shoot, it's on my I'm computer. I'm free from like one thirty to 3 on here. Yeah. <laughs> so wild. And Rachel commented on that one's like, I don't do this, but I kind of get it. Did she? Did yeah. She said that? something like that. Like, <laughs> I, I understand the reasoning behind it. <clears throat> so, yeah, that's yeah. That's kind of fun. Were you surprised that your sister? Oh, we got some. What's happening? Oh. Oh. <laughs> Some kids? Everybody's here. <laughs> yeah. oh, Catherine, a family affair Bo, here. Rosie. <laughs> I hear like, I was like, what are what are children doing in this house? It sounded like Rachel was being yeah overtaken. I heard so many different voices. Dude, uh, so this is this is Rachel's spring break week. You know, she's whatever, working at school, so she has this whole week off. And I told the kids that, oh, Bo's going potty. Um, Coming over here to take a dump, Bo. <laughs> oh, just washing his hands, just washing his hands. <laughs> Dude, it's let's talk about that real quick. It's amazing <laughs> how casually my kids poop. Like it's like, like how a dog does. Well, it's just like it's like they're just like I just need, I need to go to the bathroom and then they go like it's like a declaration for me. It's like hey, like it's like I have to like warn Catherine. I'm like FYI, Dude, yeah, I, I'm gonna take a while. Like it just, I ah, uh, if you have something on. it would take thirty minutes to do. Plan that out for later today. Just like so you know, I got the kids uh, lunch ready, but I gotta go. All right, just yes. letting you know. So I you texted Rachel lunch. like, "Hey, just have I'm, I'm on my way home, but I'm not. I will not be seeing you when I get home. <laughs> it's happening. Like the other day, like, get the epidural ready. <laughs> yeah, it's pushing time. <laughs> you ready to push, Mama? Uh, yeah. The other day, like Hattie, like I was reading uh, her bedtime story. She's like, "Oh, I need to go to the bathroom real quick," and then like I go into the bathroom after her, and you could smell like she pooped. Like you know, and she didn't mention it. She didn't say oh. anything. It took her, you know, just the same amount of time as normal. Just. Yeah. Came right out. And What's their cheese intake? Their dairy intake? <laughs> oh, they're they're decent in the dairy. I mean, they have uh, yogurt often. We got string cheese. String cheese okay. is alive and well. Uh, cottage cheese. You guys drinking that like unpasteurized, like raw milk? Yeah, we still, have. Yeah, yeah, we have milk, decent amount. Um, eggs, which okay, is not, that's yeah. not dairy. Well, that was gonna be my theory. It's like maybe we just eat a lot more cheese than kids do. But it sounds like they're cheesing just fine. They're cheesing just fine. Okay, uh, well. probably more than me, honestly. So. Hey, anyway. good for you, String Bean. Uh, yeah, thanks. Uh, let's see. What was I saying about kids? Washing hands, maybe? Washing hands. Okay. Kids come. Oh, oh, I mentioned to the kids, I was like, Rachel is free all week and she wants to hang out with you guys a bunch. And it was like the Chiefs won the Super Bowl all over again. Yeah. I mean, those kids, I mean, seriously, Bo was just like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so excited. Right, Bo? But was just, <laughs> just not, staring. Not, not know what to think. Oh, they're helping bake cookies. Wow, that's fun. That's fun. Rachel got a new matching game to play with Hattie, and we tested it out last night, and it is a doozy. There's uh, 36 matches, I think. Okay. 72 pieces. I think that one that she has is like 50. Is it really? It's crazy. <clears throat> and it's so, I played with her the other day. It's not fair. Like she knows way more. The, she know it's her home course. Yes, it is. Rachel hasn't beat her yet. I haven't beat her yet. Like I think she might struggle more with this one because it's not because like it's a it's a baby and a adult animal. Yeah. And so sometimes it's like that's a wall where she's like, that's a seal, dad. I'm sorry. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> like, no, like those are the same. Rachel's new matching game is garden themed. Yeah. And so I was trying to tell her, I was like, this isn't fair. You are much more familiar with gardens than I am. Like if we did a matching game with football players, yeah. I know it's a brand new game, but I would have an advantage. For sure. I know what a Monroe St. Brown looks like. <laughs> Do you? I, I, oh yeah. He has a podcast. Okay. Um, so, yeah. Which is a, <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> 
dude. You can see people on podcasts all the time. <laughs> what do you, yeah, podcasts. I think. Oh, I mean, they know what they look like. Um, but this garden game. I mean, there's probably nine different species of flowers. I was like, this is not fair to the guy. Yeah. Beat her anyway. Yeah, <laughs> bellflower, matter. bellflower, no problem. Iris, <laughs> iris, tulip, tulip. Never even heard geranium, of geranium, geranium. Foxglove? Any, <laughs> fox any foxglove in I there? I thought you were calling me that. <laughs> Watch your mouth, Tyler. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> careful. <laughs> Just because you go to Scissors and Scotch doesn't mean you can talk like that, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Booked my next session at all Scissors and Scotch show. Yeah. yeah, the Monday. So next comedy special is being shot in Salt Lake City, first Saturday in April. So Monday, April 1st. I'm scissoring, I'm scotching. Let's go. Enough time, you know. So wait, what? You say April 1st and when's the special? 5th or 6th, something like that. Perfect. Both of those. Perfect. Yeah, seems like yeah, a good amount of time. Let it marinate. Yes. <laughs> let it yeah. marinate. You don't want to do it. Let it simmer. Yeah. <laughs> Can you imagine those guys that like get their hair cut like the day before their wedding or something? Like that would freak me out. That would be. I would I'd be like, don't mess this up. I, I think I was in a wedding and a guy got it cut that morning. Like trying to be like, hey, you know, fresh cut. <gasps> hey, Rosie. Hi, sweetie. <laughs> There's no way. You wave and she goes. We got four of the fingers, four out of five fingers. <laughs> Kath, can you actually shut the door? Do you mind? Yeah, yeah. I think maybe it's just a little distracting to me. Hey, Hattie. <laughs> oh, she did. Hattie's being weird. Dude, Hattie is like, she has this thing. I mean, what's she doing this? No, she did. Oh, okay. She's just like <laughs> coming up, like in, like walking into a room and just doing funny faces these days. And That's it's what it was. Hilarious. I don't know. I'm like, what are you doing? I, the other day, I mean, it was like one of those, like, you are my daughter kind of moments. We were at uh, Raising Cane's and she got done with her meal and like was literally just like, like looking like a fool dancing around oh, at fun. the restaurant. And I was like, like in front of like 30 people, you know, like a whole restaurant. Of Didn't people. care. And she's just like going wild. And I'm like, I did not know you had this in you. Like goofy goober. Yeah. So anyway, uh, Rachel's free. Kids are excited about it. It's going to be a good time. Spring break. So it's fun. Uh, let's see. What should we talk about? I got a lot. We did our Ghost Hunters getaway phone calls this past week. Yeah. And I go ahead. It's fun. It got me really excited for Gulf Shores. I'm in the zone now. I'm in the Gulf Shores. Yeah, we're zone. locked in now. I am, it's the I am so pumped, dude. Like we still have a few spots open for people. I think we have two rooms now that are open as of recording this. Oh, it is going to be last year was awesome. I think this year is going to be so awesome. Like I was talking to Brooks about the menu, dude. Yeah, you sent over the menu. Did last you look night? at it? I, a little bit. A little bit. Yeah, it sounds awesome. Like he's got like little like names for all the different nights. Like one of them, slice of Americana. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I love how seriously he takes it. I know, dude. And I mean, because we can imagine, and we, because we've been in this house before, I know exactly what to expect. I know how we can like utilize it best, and it's just gonna be. Oh, it's going to be such a blast. I like that he sent over the menu and said, first draft of the menu. First attached. draft, like, yeah. he, uh, There's going to be revisions. I well, mean, he uh, was like, yeah, if you guys want to tweak it, however. So, um, yeah, I've been contacting Lambert's, rented a rental van. It's going to be a wild time, guys. Flights are getting booked. Uh -huh. We locked down a little special surprise. And uh, so it was fun. The, the call was really great. And just a lot of laughs. We raised the roof with everybody. That was pretty fun. Next time you're, on, <laughs> next time you're leading or just on a Zoom call that you have some influence in, uh, just raise the roof and see if everyone else does it with you. Hey guys, all right, I got it. I got to head out. All right, guys, thanks, guys. <laughs> Ed, well, if you do it long enough, you got to commit sometimes for like four or five seconds. But other people will see you doing it, and then all of a sudden, the whole Zoom's doing it, and it is so fun to raise the roof. Together. We're on a Google Meet call. You can see twenty different screens and faces, <laughs> and everyone's arms are oh, going at different oh. times. All right, see you guys. This is a good Daniel call. Ming, Ryan Treza, let's go. Hey, <laughs> see ya. So it's so fun. Yeah. And it's so fun, like, the dynamics are always going to be different every year. That's what makes it so exciting to me. It's like meeting new people, reuniting with old friends, you know. So, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, that was really fun. Um, and another little activity we had a night this week is uh, did a little uh, surprise birthday party for our friend uh, Emily Duckworth, Gunner's wife. And uh, in fact, we got to talk about it. What? Brad and I are just studs. Oh, oh. We're just studs. <laughs> I was, I, I forgot about that. Oh, I, I wrote, wrote that down, down immediately. I wrote down, went to birthday party and got milkshakes. That's milkshakes? I, because I thought it was so funny, like on brand with Jake and Brad, like we went to this party and it's got like a, you know, huge bar, like alcohol, like everyone else was drinking was alcohol. to get drinks there. It was like, get dinner beforehand. We're meeting yeah. here to get drinks. And I hear from, you know, Emily Madison, who's, I can say she's pregnant. Hey, you. 
Emily Madison, who's Emily pregnant. Emily Madison, if you didn't want us to know you're pregnant, let us know once this comes out. And she's like, hey, <laughs> FYI, they got really good milkshakes here. And I was like, now we're talking. <laughs> I'm not spending $7 on an IPA that I don't even know what it's going to taste like beforehand. Oh, yeah. I'm going over there to the milkshakes, though. I've you been doing believe pretty it. good with sweets, sugs. And then, yeah, I had not one little sip of Scott Caldwell's Reese's shake. And yeah, I went over there. Got the it's small over. still. Me too. But the, the large was, do you see the sizes? The large was like barely bigger than the mm-hmm. small. Anyway, doesn't matter. Um, we got a, like a milkshake of our own <laughs> on the way there. So <clears throat> we're actually, so Rachel's gone. She's out of town. Another bachelorette party this past weekend. And so we're in the car. So me, Brad, and Catherine all ride there together in Brad's truck. Great car ride, by the way. It was truck a fun ride. time. But we're talking about Rachel's bachelorette party. We get to a stop by. About that same time, we pull up next to what looks like a bachelorette party. Yeah. So we're joking. Rachel, you in there? You know, whatever. She's in Savannah, Georgia. But uh, somebody rented out. A uh, nice big old party bus, shuttle bus looking thing. Mm-hmm. And you could definitely see like a girl with like a veil on. So like, oh, wow, this is a bachelorette party. And we're kind of looking at them just investigating the scene. And yeah. they start looking at us. Brad and I, I'm sitting shotgun. We just give them a little wave. Yeah, you did it. You're getting married. <laughs> and then they keep drunk. looking. So we just keep waving, just being dumb. Just, yeah. <laughs> just thumb up, <laughs> thumbs up, waving. Oh, yeah. Finger yeah, guns. Yeah, yeah, you yeah, guys, yeah. yes, you got married. Raise the roof. <laughs> right. Yeah, we did raise the roof a little bit. <laughs> One thing leads to another, and Catherine goes, oh, boys, do not look. Do Don't not look. look back there. <laughs> Don't look. Don't look. What do I do right away? Peer on back there. <laughs> I I never did get to see. Nor I. We missed it. Yeah. But apparently, old girl's milkshakes are out, <laughs> and she's giving us a show. And Catherine's just like, oh, my gosh, I can't believe that. I was like, Catherine. That is it's, not how you do it. it <laughs> no, <I'm just> <laughs> <laughs> Just terrible form. Yeah. Like, press them up against the glass. <laughs> it's it's tinted. We can barely see. Oh my gosh, dude! <laughs> Hold your phone flashlight on yourself so we can see them better. Oh man. Uh, yeah, she was. Catherine's like, I can't believe that. And I was like, Catherine, it's us. <laughs> We're stunned. What do you, I, <laughs> this happens every at, time Brad and I are in the car together. I mean, this truck is just a babe magnet. <laughs> you got to know that right off the bat. Oh, uh, man. Yeah. yeah. We were trying to convince Catherine, like, Catherine, this happens all the time with us. It would have been great. <laughs> so my truck, the, the, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Catherine, like, this is run of the mill. This when, happened when you're earlier in, this morning. Yeah. When you're a <laughs> podcaster like us and Amon Ross A. Brown, it happens all the time. Um, <laughs> Well, my my two front window side windows of my truck are not tinted, but the two back ones are. AKA they couldn't see Catherine in the back, and so how funny would it have been if Catherine just rolls down her window and wh- whatever. Yeah. You go girls. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Or gives them the thumbs down. Uh-huh. Um, Catherine thumbs down. Girls, come on. Anyway, it was pretty pretty hilarious. So, <laughs> I, I forgot all about that. Yeah. <laughs> and wrote down milkshakes instead. We got flash. <laughs> So yeah, it's pretty that, awesome. Scratch that off your bingo board. Did have that on my bingo card on Emily Duckworth's birthday. <laughs> so yeah, um, it was fun. Just nice little, just a uh, little treat. Well, I mean, we, we didn't even see anything, but nice little treat on the way to Emily's party. Just uh, <laughs> like, oh, that's crazy. That's crazy. I didn't where Yeah. Didn't see anything. <laughs> yeah. So enjoy the view to your left, Hermanos. <laughs> You're going to love it. Wild times. That's yeah. You know, that's Kansas City girls, though. That's what they're known for. That's hey, they're fun <laughs> mm-hmm. more than anything. They're fun people. So just like Cozy Earth is fun. Oh yeah, in they the are. same exact way. <laughs> I can't emphasize enough how much I love Cozy Earth. Yeah, it really is just a thing. I'm trying to think how to say it differently than how I always say it <laughs> because I, you know, when you're a raving fan of something, it's just like, well, I don't know. It's just good. It's no, it's really Ooh, good. You know what I'll say this week? Very good. I have been so pleased by what this viscose from bamboo material feels like, whether it's my jogs, my hoodie, mm-hmm. my shirt, uh, my bed sheets, that I bought new underwear this week. And Ooh. this might have been, I mean, the first time I bought new underwear, <laughs> I, I don't know. Really? I, I don't know when the last time was. Didn't upgrade for the wedding. I did not. <laughs> I, uh, no, didn't uh, really cross my mind. Didn't need the. I remember in 20, either 2015 or 2016, leaving Canacuck for the summer. And my laundry got mixed up with someone else. And I ended up with Daniel Evans' pair of boxers. So I know which pair of boxers are Daniel Evans. And I know I still wear those. (laughs) Really? Okay. So, I mean, that's like between eight and nine years. (laughs) Wow. For sure. They don't get get holes? I've got a couple pairs. It's a little personal. But no, for the most part, cotton's holding up. (laughs) Wow. Fruit of the Loom knows what they're up to. (laughs) Loom. But I'll have to say, this is still part of the Cozy Earth ad. I, (laughs) I bought... 
uh, bamboo boxer briefs. From Cozy Earth? No. <laughs> but it <laughs> so was I because they had those. I want that feeling all over me. Yeah, more. yeah, yeah. Cozy Earth does viscose for bamboo. And it is a unique just sensation is maybe yeah. too strong a word, but a unique feeling. Oh, it's just so comfortable, dude. Yeah. Like, ever it's very since, cooling. Ever since I've gotten their uh, sweatshirt and sweatpants combo. I've talked yeah. about last last episode. You're last, a hype beast. Dude, I have worn them every single night to bed. It's like it's a it's a tradition. <laughs> Catherine calls it my sweatsuit. And she like she you wake like, up drenched. Hey, I'm doing I'm doing laundry. Do you want uh do you want me to wash your sweatsuit? And I was like, <laughs> sure. I mean, it is the most comfortable thing. I'm looking here for men. They have pants, joggers, tops, button down shirts, hoodies, and sweatshirts. Pajamas, shorts, socks, robes. For women, they have the same. And they also have bath, uh, you know, towels robes, everything. And then of course their bedding is just second to none. And remind me which one of those products come with a 10 year warranty. I think z- zero. No, all of them. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Well, sorry. Let me ask you a better question. Which one of those products don't have a 35% off uh coupon code GRKC? Oh, it looks like site wide, 35% off. Site wide. Yeah. Site wide. All things must go 35% off. That's right. With our promo code um, site wide. Try it out. You won't ever regret using it. You just won't. And if you do, 10-year warranty. But you won't. Yeah. They do have returns, but... <laughs> yeah, uh, right? CozyEarth.com. Never known how to do it because I've never done it before. Never will. Couldn't tell you about the return policy. What's the promo code? GRKC? GRKC. Wow, that's good. <laughs> that is good. Man, <laughs> even like going to their website, like they just look... People look so comfortable in these ads. Yeah. Look at happy. Wee. Happy folks. <sighs> Fun times. Um, okay, I, I did something in hindsight that was so dumb. But for whatever reason, Catherine convinced me that it was not a dumb thing. Uh, on Saturday morning, post, you know, dadder days, post post uh, breakfast with the kids, I had the idea of like, I was like, Catherine, I'm going to try to give you more time. I'll go on a little excursion with the kids. You know, we go to Bass Pro Shop before we go to the park or whatever. And then I'll bring back, you know, maybe one or two of the kids and then go to Costco uh, for shopping. And she's like, I mean, the kids do really great at Costco. You could just bring all three of them. And I was like, I've never done that, but you have apparently. So yeah, okay. it sounds great. It was the worst decision I have made in a long time. To take all three to Costco? My gosh. Well, first of all, just like you, I've only been to Costco maybe, I think this is genuinely like my second or third time ever. So like, I'm not familiar with the store. She's asking me to buy things that I have not, definitely not found. I didn't know where yeah. vinegar was. Yeah. I didn't know. And so all of a sudden, and then Bo insists on being in the like shopping cart, not in like the place where you're supposed to sit the okay. cute babies. And then Hattie wants to be in the shopping cart. So then all of a sudden Costco, all these bulk items, and I'm just shoving them <laughs> in my, like in the shopping cart with my kids, like basically trying to bury Bo to the point where he will like finally concede, but he just keeps like crouching down. <laughs> and <laughs> I mean, it was just, it was just pandemonium. It was Saturday morning at like 11 o'clock. I waited like three minutes just to get a parking spot thinking it was a good parking spot. Oh, wow. I mean, it was just wild. I didn't know where anything was. I was literally having to ask Hattie, like, Hattie, where is this where the eggs are? She's like, no, the eggs are in that other cold cooler area. <laughs> and I was like, okay, great. And, and then of course she's like trying to get all these samples. She's kind of cr- not, not whining, but she keeps being like, can we go to the toys now? Can we check out the toys? And finally, like, as a joking way, I just go, Hattie, if you ask me about the toys one more time, I'm going to shove you in that shopping cart and throw you out in the parking lot. <laughs> 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 so that was hilarious. But like, I mean, there were so many times where we went up and down aisles just looking for things. Vinegar, uh, baking soda. Where the heck would you find baking soda? Yeah, go to Costco is kind of a team sport. You got to like almost go with a partner and split up. I would have loved to have anybody else there with me or minus a few people there. Yeah. I mean, it was just, it was, I, I, I know I was like, hey, we can take our time. This will be a great time killer. But eventually it got to the point where it was a boiling point And I was like, I am ready to get out of here. Get on out. Because- it's like Costco, it's like driving. It's like you, you have like, you, it's like almost like a one way street or, and you have to like, m- like yield for people going in this <laughs> aisle. Like there was one time I was like, oh, I'm pretty sure the vinegar is actually down this aisle. So I go to like turn around and there's like five people behind me waiting for me to go forward. Oh, sorry. And I was like, ah, so we had like, like this huge loop around these massive, like home Depot sized aisles. It sounds like you went at a really busy time. It was a, Exactly. So why did my, my wife should have known I, I was, so usually I text Catherine almost always like headed home exclamation point. No exclamation point this time <laughs> headed home. She knew she goes, everybody doing okay. And I said, 
I mean, we went to Costco, all three of us, at Saturday at 11 a.m. So we're doing about as good as you can do. But it was a stressful time. Um, only got one sample. Uh, so Hattie was belly aching about that. Belly aching. <laughs> it was just a wild time. So You ever have the Costco um, food? I've never tried it. I've heard fine things about it. Like the whole thing just stresses me out, though, when you have kids. I'm like, I'm not going to try to navigate that area. Yeah. Yeah. You, you done it? The pizza? Yeah, I've had the pizza. Yeah. And it's not bad, especially for the price. What is It's like $1.50 or something? Yeah, maybe. Yeah. <clears throat> it's awesome. And some old guy, the first time Rachel and I were there, you know, just classic old guy just approaching and just talking to you about stuff. He's uh -huh. like, you know what you're having, don't you? Like, cheese pizza. No. You're having cheese pizza from the most popular pizza place in America. But you didn't know that, huh? They sell more pizzas than Pizza Hut, Domino's. Really? And I was like, Really? He's like, oh, yeah, think about it. And then did a bunch of math for oh. me. And I was like, oh. <laughs> Can you look that up, Tommy? Because I have heard, like, Costco like is, like, the biggest wine seller, oh. S-E-L-L-E-R, uh, in the world or something like that. But I wonder if Costco just tries to claim that for everything. Yeah, like, I mean, I didn't question him. I was like, oh, that's yeah. interesting. Yeah, maybe they are. That's <laughs> neat. I never thought about that. Um, so, yeah, the pizza is worth getting. Isaac has told me the chicken bake is really good, but it has bacon in it, so I can't have it. Chicken bake, huh? I don't even know what it is totally. It but sounds fun, though. I uh, got a smoothie there one time, and that seemed about as artificial as possible. I don't know if you'd recommend a smoothie <laughs> if you want something made of real fruit. Costco is just outside the top 10. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> like all the pizza places you've ever heard of yeah, are, yeah. are outselling Costco. <laughs> you did the math wrong. Apparently. Yeah, that's right. That's, that's fun. so fun. I'm almost positive that was the data point. He said like they sell the most pizzas. Because uh, I have heard it about wine. You can look that up, time and see if that's true. And I think, like, I don't know. Who look knows? up what? Sorry. Does Costco sell more wine or something like that? I don't know. I see. Who, who wines the most? <laughs> Does Costco sell more wine than There others? it is. Largest, Largest wine, retailer. wine retailer. Wow. So maybe he meant wine. And that's the funny thing. I didn't even see wine when I was there. Like, I don't even. <laughs> that, that place is wild to me. I told Catherine at the end, I was like, I have such a love-hate relationship with Costco. Because even <clears throat> getting the kids to the car and then I'm in the truck, you know, if it was in the van, that's one thing. But the truck is like, where do I put this food? I could put it in, you know, the back in the bed. But I can't, like somebody parked so close to me behind me that I couldn't get the bed down. And so then. Oh, I see. And so then somebody else next to me like leaves their parking lot or parking space. So that I have an empty parking space. Then somebody else comes in. So I had to like park my shopping cart in front of my truck, walk to the side of the door with my stuff, open the door, put the stuff in, shut the door so I can get back to my cart over and over again. I was like, I need to be doing this better. I, I am bothered by how I have not hacked this system yet. It was just, it was just overall just like this. I like this place. I like the idea of like stocking up, but I didn't like the way I did it at all. As efficient as a lot of these big companies are with different stuff. I'm surprised Costco hasn't found a way to like you know, just a joke, people should, is there a better way to redo parking lots to where you can't ever be boxed in like that? There's got some engineer out there has got to figure out a better way to do parking lots. Yeah, maybe for, so. For groceries specifically, <laughs> for gr bulk groceries. Well, whoa. Hey, buddy, boy. <laughs> hey, Bo. <laughs> you bringing them in? Bo, can I get that drink for Miss Rachel? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> You've been eating some dough? <laughs> you got some on your face. <laughs> He's, got here, a, buddy. He's got a floor length apron on. It's amazing. <laughs> Oh, you. here, you bring me mine. I'll give you a sip. You put it in your oh, 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 camera almost went down. You want to try some? Just no. Okay. Yeah. Just a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> Bo, do you have anything on your face or is it clean? Come here. Bo, what did you like to do at Costco? Did you have fun at Costco or was it a stressful time for you too? <laughs> <laughs> did you feel like dad was getting short temper? <laughs> <laughs> Can't take his eyes off Mr. H. No. <laughs> what are you what are you baking? What are you baking? You don't know? You might not know. We don't look like him right now. Oh. <laughs> are you baking muffins? No. All right. You can sit here. You want to sit here with me or you want to go back with Miss Rachel? Go back with Miss Rachel. All right. So you see you podcast. Okay. Right. <laughs> See you, buddy. Yeah, mm, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like where he's gonna trip on those cords. 
These, uh, fun. these are so good. That was a blast. Bubbler, you want to sponsor us? Because man, yeah, Bubbler. Curly training for me. I've been you. Well, sorry. Let's keep talking about Costco. Um, yeah, I don't know if I. Oh, they do have extra wide, like like you know how normally they just have a single line for the parking spaces. Mm-hmm. Costco does have extra wide like lines. You know what that reminds me of? You ever see like uh, like international basketball being played? Like the key, uh-huh. the lane is a little bigger, a little wider. Yeah, Something there's like a, that. It's just, it just does feel like a different world at Costco. Like it's like, forget all the rules you know about. Like start over. Also, dude, I, <laughs> I don't know if anybody else has this irrationally strong opinion. I could wait for that. But um, their conveyor belt is is you know like I've never seen a CB at Costco. Well, what do you call it? like? Oh, what, oh, oh, when you're just checking out. Sorry, yeah, I see what you're saying. I don't know. That's a probably good word. Okay, for it. whatever. The, the the checkout conveyor belt thing seems. 60% as long as a standard one. <laughs> and it fires me yeah, up. Yeah, you're like, I got a 36 pack I of have bounty so much stuff paper here. tiles. I can't fit. And they're like, they're like, keep the big things in there, but put all the, and I was like, the guy had checked out before I had gotten all my stuff and you have to show him your card before you unload. And I was, I was like, this would be so much more efficient if this conveyor belt <laughs> bigger, was Bigger, wider, faster, stronger. That's, the whole thing with Costco is more, bigger. Yeah. Why, I mean, and these things are four feet long, it feels like. So no, notice that next time you're there. Yeah, I will. Now I'm getting fired up for the for the Titan that Costco is. They should be doing a lot of things better. <laughs> yeah, you can't fit that much wine on a tiny little conveyor belt. And man, I love wine. It's funny you say I didn't even see the wine because we were talking about this on the Ghost Runners Getaway Call. I was like, I think I just don't <laughs> see alcohol. It's like when people are like I just don't see color. It's like <laughs> I don't see alcohol because yeah. you were like. Hey, as far as alcohol goes on the trip, here's kind of our policy, yada, yada. And you're like, but last year, I mean, people still had fun. Like, there were still drinks and people had beers. And I was like, I don't. I didn't see it? a single beer. Yeah. Did you, did you guys do that without me? Or like, did I not see, <laughs> yeah. see it? You do it privately in your rooms? I was like, I swear, all week long, I never saw anyone drink alcohol. Just pour it into a tumbler and no one will know. I was just, like, I was just a sheltered <laughs> kid. Just like, why does it say Coor, Coors Pepsi? Huh? I don't That's know. Weird. Kelsey's breath smells funny. I don't know what's going on in there. <laughs> Just sheltered. Yeah. yeah, it must be Coke Zero Light. Oh, they got a retro flavor that, yeah, Diet Dr. Pepper. <laughs> L-I-T-E. So, yeah, I just I just don't see alcohol. <laughs> it's my cross to bear. I just don't, I don't recognize it. Yeah, man. But Costco figured out. <sighs> yes. That, yeah. Yeah. Conveyor belts. You can do a lot of fun things with conveyor belts. Take it to your car. I mean, outdoor conveyor belts. I don't know. Get just, nasty. Or everyone gets their own conveyor belt. Yeah. Or you're just like you're a zo- you get you walk in and you're like you guys are blue, <laughs> and instead of having shopping carts now you just put it on a co- blue conveyor belt and then you find it at the end. Yeah, baggage claim, but for groceries. <laughs> Ooh, okay. Stay with the airport theme. There's certain airports where you guys have flown into them where they've got Uber down. Okay, and so I don't know Minneapolis, LAX. There's a few I think like this, but like when you order an Uber from there, it'll say you are L7 pink. Oh, you're like, oh, running, running trips, right? Is this football play or, uh-huh. you know, something like that. And then you go into the separate parking garage. The whole parking garage is just for like ride share and pickup and everything. Uh-huh. You just go to this exact column, this color, yada, yada. What if Costco did that? And they just had like people just like valets and just like yeah. you let them know on the app. I'm checking out like five minutes. All right, we'll pull your car up. You're going to be an A6. That yeah. would be awesome. I like I like the idea of just like having a personal valet kind of person for anything like this. Yeah, 60 second butler. Yeah, 60 second butler, but just like a a one day hireable valet of something. Or either either he's the one with the cart, he's the one pulling up the car, he's the one having to worry about the conveyor belt. There's got to be something like that. Yeah, I looked this up so I have slowed down a little bit with suits, but I'm still watching it when I can and you know, he's uh, this show is about just like these top notch New York City, like Manhattan lawyers. And so they're always wearing suits. They're always doing things real uppity. But they, this guy, it seems like time to time has a personal driver. I was like, man, that is kind of cool. Yeah. Like, I wonder just like how much that even costs. Just have a guy drive you around. And I remember looking it up and it like wasn't that much. It wasn't that much more than an Uber. I was like, oh, yeah, that's what an Uber is. You just yeah. get an Uber black or something. Yeah. But it'd be awesome to have it like on call. Like he stays. Yeah. Yeah. He's yeah, just available whenever. Yes. Just for like a day, like a day you need to impress someone or a day you need to like, you have a big meeting where they're going to see you get out of the car for some reason. Or even just like a, uh, like at your bachelor party or something, how fun would it have been to like, just always have somebody ready to go? Like, yeah, like, all right, I don't know. Maybe that that wouldn't be as big of a deal. Like it'd just be fun to like, be like, okay, we're done with this. We're done with this lunch spot. Call Maurice. No, Maurice is there. Oh, 
Well, as long Maurice, as his name's Maurice, I'm Maurice cool. is Maurice is sitting there sipping a little affogato on the side. <laughs> he's hanging out. Yeah, <laughs> he's ready to go. <laughs> Maurice, that was fun. What was the name of that coffee shop that we'd always go to next to our Airbnb in Arizona? This is one of those things that like you would remember. Oh, and I Isaac remember. would get a 64 ounce <laughs> vanilla latte there every morning. I was going to say Isaac. I, I, I only went through the drive through there once. Uh, okay, yeah. Isaac went there every single day. <laughs> yeah, that really showed uh, like how much Isaac was addicted to Main Street Roasters. Yep. <laughs> That's what it was called. That's Main Street, Street It was called Main Street Roasters, yeah, guys. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, they are located... Well, um, in my heart, they are located uh, just outside of Scottsdale, but on a map, they are located in Napanee, Indiana. But they all also could be located... In your mouth. Right in your kitchen. Or, yep. yeah, it's in your <laughs> mouth. They, they ship anywhere that you want them to. I dare you to... Name a place. Yugoslavia. Is that still a country? Because you hear people talk about what no. was former Yugoslavia. What was formerly... No, it's like Croatia now, I think. Croatia's not a country? No, no, oh, Croatia. Oh, oh sorry. <laughs> it's, it's similar to, it's you know, like Croatia. Uh, Germany. Like USSR. Kind of <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I got you. Uh, similar to Persia, which yes. is now Iran, I think. Very good. Thanks. Great rugs. <laughs> yeah. Two days. What else do they do? Um, Persian. Missiles. Cats. Okay. I think. Cats and missiles. Persian. They... Sorry, we're just, we're just saying what Macy Roasters wanted us to say. They wanted us to bring up those topics. They're like riff point. on Persia a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> make it in your own feel words, bad. though. Like we've typed out some stuff, and make it feel natural. Natural Persian conversation. So maybe mission you, accomplished. Maybe you're one of those people. It's like I really want to go to the ghost runners getaway, but scheduling conflict or money conflict. No worries. You can experience the same thing all the people at Ghost Runners Getaway will experience every single morning with a hot steaming cup of Joe from Main Street Row. <laughs> Extra, extra hot <laughs> steam a cup. Steam a cup Steaming of Joe coming through <laughs> from Main Street Roasters and MainStreetRoasters.com. I'm seeing here bullet point. Yeah, talking a 1920s <laughs> Newsies accent, but do it in your own words. Okay, we nailed that. Uh, MainStreetRoasters.com. Get your coffee. 10% off. Code GRKC. <laughs> yeah, baby. Mission accomplished. We did it. <clears throat> um, let's see. What are we talking about? Played a, well, first, still fully in my chest phase. Every week I go deeper in it than the week before. Loving chess still. Are you uh, virtual every time or are you playing? Last like, night, Rachel played manual. over the board, yeah. as they say. We did one garter matching game, one chess game. Oh, nice. Um, and like, anyway, like 100 years ago, we couldn't have done either of those things. 100 years <laughs> ago, we'd be going to the garden. <laughs> what did people do 100 years ago? Uh, so Gunnar and I text every day because we're still playing each other uh, online. And so we're very in touch with each other. I haven't seen Gunner since the Super Bowl, though. Yeah. Until this set, but texting him all the time. Saw him this past Saturday because we got together with the boys, played football. Best the highlight of my week. Yeah. And it felt like one of those moments. You see those videos that go viral where it's like they've been playing Call of Duty together for 14 years. <laughs> Today they finally <laughs> met. It felt like that. Where it's like, dude, it's so good to just like see you in person, man. It's just like you <laughs> you sound the exact same. Like it's so cool. Like do we play football, dude? It's just like ah, it's just like. It's like, it's man, like when you, you trade pawns with me, dude. I right. just get it. You think he's got a good strategy on the field, dude. You should see him on the board. The way he cuts, he's like a bishop, dude. <laughs> yeah, it's just exactly. so diagonal at all times. So. Oh, man, dude. It was I a really sweet moment. What, isn't there like uh, different positions on chess or like different openings? Or no, like like names of like places on the board. Or oh, yeah. That's a grid. Yeah. E6 square. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like you guys, you guys like call audibles. Like yeah, yeah. Hey, Bishop E six, E six knight, knight. And you, because doesn't knight go uh, right angle? Uh, yeah, it's like an L shape. So you'd be like, hey, run the run, R the, knight. run the knight, knight right, knight right, knight, 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 knight right, knight right, <laughs> knight right, knight right, knight right. three. Hey, you two, castle. All right, on two. Uh, that'd that'd so. be fun to have. Like that'd be so dorky. Like, but awesome. Like you'd have your own little yeah. like lingo. No it one would know. Fun. No one else. Fun. No one else would know. How would they know? <laughs> What's like a. Uh, What's the one that just goes straight up and down? Uh, maybe there's a rook. lot of those. That's like a fly route. Rook, yeah. Hey, rook him. Hey, rook, rook. Rook him. Rook him. Hey, hey, Nick's the knight. Rook, rook. <laughs> Nick's the knight. <laughs> I love it, dude. Yeah, there's a lot you can do. Oh, Gunner's listening to this getting fired up right now. What else is there? Pawn um, would just be like a, probably just like a little a hook, a curl or something. Is there a backwards? Can you go backwards? Uh, yeah, is most of the pieces go backwards. Everything but a pawn can go backwards. Okay, anti-pawn, anti-pawn, hey, anti-pawn. That's, anti -pawn. that's when you know you're doing a lateral and you're going deep, <laughs> like a Philly special. Anti-pawn, anti-pawn. <laughs> yeah, what else did he have? 
Um, Maybe pawn is just like a, a quick, you know, slant. No, not a slant, but like a just a quick route of some sort. Just like be looking like, a, hey, I'm expecting the blitz here. Be looking. Yeah, I, head on a swivel. Pawn, 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 pawn. <laughs> pawn, Mike, Mike, 55. Joe, you're my pawn here. You're my pawn here. It's like you're my hot read. Yeah. What would the king be? You told me, brother. <laughs> What does the king do? Maybe I'm the king. Hey, don't let him get to the king, guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's get some blockers in here. Yeah, Gunner, Gunner sacks you. He just goes, checkmate. <laughs> <laughs> what is king? Queen's Gambit accepted. Which is the king the one or is the queen the one that's like, you win if you get it? King is what you're trying to check and checkmate. If you, if you trap it, you get it. You okay. win the game. Queen is, it's like a lion. It's like, it's we, like everyone looks versatile. at the... It, the king is like, oh, but the queen's one doing all the work. Like okay. the female lions, they're doing all the hunting. Okay. Queen's powerful. Could she do anything diagonal or? Can't do uh, what the horsey does, but can do everything else. Okay. It can, it can rock them. It can pawn them. Dude, those horses look so cool in chess. Yeah. By far the coolest looking. If the chess piece. pieces were a monopoly, you would play with the with the horse, with the knight. 100%. Yeah. I might go rook. I like the, the Which nice. Which one's that? I don't even know what that looks like. It's like a, like a column looking thing okay uh, that's what i imagine all of them looking like wow rook uh, on google search does not get you chess pieces very quickly what's it show you apparently it's a bird also it's a there's a bunch of earrings <laughs> rook piercing did you type in hook no <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's showing me fishing lures also it's like this peter pan propaganda <laughs> um okay yeah rook that's a nice like table leg the people who like rooks are the same people who chose the top hat which also was me. I like a nice just circular you, symmetry. I was a race, race car guy. Oh, yeah, that it's on par with the night. Yeah. Yeah. Flashy, edgy, fun. <laughs> funny. <laughs> That's uh, fun that you're playing with gun. I, I love that. Yeah, really into chess. And also at Emily's birthday party, learned that Josh Madison's into chess. We got a little game going as oh, well. Nice. So now I'm two timing. Yeah, you're yeah, you're gonna, Okay, so how long does it take on average to play a game? via text like is it a day or is it a week yeah maybe like 24 to 48 hours yeah you know it depends on how available you are you got us playing at a you know surprise 30 year old birthday party this weekend so i didn't hear back from gunner a lot not a lot uh -huh. of texts being switched out saturday but um but yeah day what, or two what about like just in general in chess what like it could you win very very quickly like in four moves or something if you if somebody I think else I've only really... done that once. Yeah, there's okay. like certain traps you could do if the other person plays perfectly. Then like, yeah, you can win like five or six moves. But have you been looking up strategy at all? Uh, you know, when you a little bit, but uh -huh. I'm not into it enough to where I want to sit down and watch this 30 minute YouTube video on chess theory. I'd rather yeah. just like, well, or I could just play the computer right now. <laughs> uh, that sounds more fun. Well, that's the beauty of like YouTube shorts these days is like yeah. you can search something and you can find like a long yeah, 12 version? minute long tutorial mm -hmm. or you can be like, I was watching this YouTube short. And it's kind of like roulette. It's like, I'll take my chances on the short. <laughs> and if it works, let's just great. see. Let's just see if it works. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah, it's a real oh. good time. Also, Josh Madison at Emily's birthday party. <laughs> so, like, we just got to talk about that. So, it was so great. So, I was in multiple group conversations with Josh when his hat was complimented. The guys just, I don't know, they just loved his hat. What was and it? And it? it had the main, the old main flag on it. Right. And we all know what the state flags look I don't like. need to say yeah. it to you guys. Tap a sig. <laughs> and he, uh, people were just liked his hat. And then I think we were all in, we were ordering our milkshakes. Josh is five feet behind us. We turn around. Josh got a different hat on. Go, What's, what, whoa, what happened? He goes, oh, I just did a hat swap. <laughs> like, is that a thing? You just jersey <laughs> swap with a guy? He's like, no, he just said he really liked my hat. We're like, do you really like the one you have on? Not as much. It's okay. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. <laughs> uh, but that was really funny and really nice of him. He was just like, yeah, I mean, he really liked it. So, and he, and he so, said, yeah. he was a Christian. We're like, when did you learn this? We were next to you this whole day. You, <laughs> you did a transaction and learned his religious beliefs? Yeah. While tell, I ordered one milkshake? Tell me your testimony, man. <laughs> like, just take the hat. <laughs> I like the idea of, uh, yeah, just switching clothes with people. I think that's pretty funny. Yeah. Hey, I'll trade you this for that. My friend Matt Kelly, who went to Baylor, would all anytime someone complimented his shirt, he'd take it off and give it to him right away. Really? Yeah. Always that was it. a big thing at camp. Uh, if you remember, like every school, every college had their own shirt. Oh yeah, you like, would trade. Yeah. Yeah, you you would have like a staff shirt, like a K State staff shirt, but you'd also have like a just a general like can of cuck. Everyone got the same staff shirt, but like everyone told you like, hey, order like four or five staff shirts. Mm -hmm. Because you're going to get there and other people are going to have shirts and you guys trade them. Oh, that was so fun. I forgot about that. Yeah. You remember Auburn's? 
Auburn had the coolest staff shirt ever. Depends on the year. Like there's one year KU had amazing ones. Another year they had like a three quarter sleeve baseball one that yeah. was hard to deal. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like most SBU years, it was hard. That was not a lot of good trade I never material. Never saw an SBU shirt. <laughs> <laughs> it was like impact, like word art on there. Yeah, like we tried our best. <laughs> um, no, the Auburn one was like it was a tiger, but it had like all the letters of the tiger were like Kanaka K A staff. Oh, that's cool. it was. It was my first summer, so maybe it was before you were there. Mm. But I feel like you would have seen it. It was so dope. And it was also the year that they won the national championship with Cam Newton. So oh. everyone wanted the Auburn. Yeah, your big Auburn train. Yeah. Yeah, anyway. trading clothes is fun. Let's do it more often. You and me? Me and you? Time? We'll figure it out. Anyway. <laughs> uh, what else yeah, got? that was the party. That was a fun time. Uh, let's see. A couple updates. Uh, just, just mediocre life updates. Human versus hamster. Haven't heard anything. Guessing we did not get cast in it. You don't know, though. Yeah. But does it? They you, you'd think they would at least give you a conclusive no, <laughs> right? Nothing conclusive yet. You guys killed the interview. That's what he said. And I'm sure he didn't say that to anybody he never, else. Like, that's like not like a <laughs> standard thing he says. I doubt he would exaggerate to make us happy. That was like uh, December that you guys did that interview? Yeah, I was in uh, Hawaii. Yeah. I interviewed. So, yeah, it's been a while. That's that a, was November. I, I feel think. like you hear actors talking about i mean it was just like i just it was just like months and months of silence and finally get the call so hey <laughs> yeah or it could be like they chose somebody else above you and they said no and you're in you're you're alternate one yeah you don't know i'll take it hey hey that thing um be fun what was oh it was like you would do a competition and the hamster would do the same thing on their size yeah like, like, <laughs> yeah like a scale for the hamster they said things like for instance mazes or escape rooms or uh, obstacle courses, archery contests, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> things that need opposable thumbs You're to like, do. Whoa, hamsters are way more amazing than I thought. <laughs> <laughs> so, human versus ham, probably not happening. Okay, I've had a couple people ask me about Bondi bowls. Really, really slow moving right now. Not nothing really fun to report. Well, you were there when I got a phone call. Yeah, I compared I don't know if we it to talked about it that much though. I said my uh, real estate agent called me on Friday when Brad was over and. Uh, she was just like, I've never had a, a deal in my 14 years or however long. She's like, I've never had a deal go this slow before. I just feel bad. Like, cause I found the perfect spot. We're negotiating and just going slow. And, um, anyway, she's like, I'm just, I'm really sorry. I'm embarrassed. And I was like, it's okay. It's just, for me, it just feels bad. Like I thought I found, what did I tell her? I thought I found my wife and I was, I didn't have to look anywhere else anymore. And yeah. now I'm starting to realize I got to redownload Tinder again yeah, and I got to get on said. LoopNet <laughs> and I got to start trying to sell. I think the search might be back on really? trying to find the perfect spot again. So what? it's just not fun to have to like go back several steps. So from what I'm understanding, they're just like not communicating much back, right? They're not saying no, right? More recently, they said no. They kind of said like we're having second thoughts about your concept. So um, we were right. trying to do our best to convince them otherwise. Gotcha. So, Dang. Um, so yeah, that's still excited. But you, but you were so pumped about oh, it, dude. Oh, yeah. 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 But it, you never know. Okay. So just a couple of life updates of things that I talked about previously. And what uh, what would be like a normal turnaround time from what you understand as far as like we may, we place a offer for this commercial place. They get back to you in a couple of weeks. Yeah. I would think you wouldn't nothing over like 10 or 14 days. Yeah. And the last email I sent was uh, the morning after the Super Bowl. So it's been a while. And I guess they haven't. From what I understand, those other places in there are not like food places. Do they have any other food places around? That's a problem. They're worried if they have too many food concepts. Oh, too many. Because the Big Biscuit is there. Another breakfast spot is there. Another Broken Egg Cafe. Oh, there okay. is Betty Ray's is coming in next to us. And then the bar is there. Dang. Already. That, that's a bad thing to have? I, I Trust me, brother. I, know, I'm not, I'm not, I have I'm a not. lot of thoughts. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You'd think... <clears throat> I don't know. Now I'm going to have to look at commercial real estate and be like, how many food places they have in this strip mall? Like, how does that work? Oh, yeah. I just can't imagine, which good for them. They have spent millions of dollars. They just built this, redeveloped it. So I'm sure they have a lot invested into it. They want to be very particular. But my thought is in a post-COVID world where everything's kind of going online, way less brick and mortar stores than we've ever seen. Like, if I owned commercial real estate, I would be not doing too great the last four years, a little more nervous than normal. And if someone was begging to sign a 10 year lease, I'd email them back 10 years. Yeah. yeah. Especially like food. Cause food doesn't feel like it's 
leaving the brick and mortar nearly as much as like a boutique. Shopping. Yeah. 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 Online. You buy your clothes online pretty regularly. You don't, you order DoorDash or something online, I guess, but like, so the majority of people are still going mm-hmm. to pick up their own food. Hey, so, may, maybe we'll get an email later today. Release me to the dogs. I'll talk to them. Yeah. I've been trying. I, yeah. Trying a few different things, but huh. I was like, man, we are begging to give you a half a million dollars. <laughs> really? <laughs> please. You yeah. know, over the course of 10 years. Yeah. But, um, please let us do that. <laughs> nah, <laughs> not uh, worth it. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> uh, that's all right. So yeah. Uh, Bondi hamster. I bought new underwear. That's me. That's what we do. Uh, we had a fun uh, karaoke live stream the other day. I think after this, we should do it with us three again. Yeah. Patreon and live stream. Okay. Let's do it. Oh, that'd be fun. Yeah. Apparently, it's like a pretty big trend. I saw Justin Timberlake do it, and Jake's like, oh, yeah, I've seen a bunch of people do that. I was like, well, okay. But you just you play a song, and the camera can see what song it is, but the person trying to sing it cannot. So you should try to guess the song and the lyrics. And it was so much fun. That live was the first time I'd seen it done. It was that's oh, cool. it, was, it was so fun. Hey, new thing, new new trend. New, Just new, like going live. New trend yes, to us. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it uh trend on a trend. I've never tried to do it, but I was trying to imagine what it'd be like. And I think, Brad, you were very good at it. I think. I maybe. I'm 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 truly not even trying to be humble. I think it's not that hard, but maybe so. Maybe yeah, so. Yeah, I guess you know. Every person knows a certain amount of genres, but even just like knowing, it's not just like knowing the lyrics to start a song, but it's like knowing when to come in, yeah. which you had most of the time. Or even yeah. if you realized you came in at the wrong time, <laughs> you would get it back at the chorus or something, which is maybe, hard to maybe do. Maybe that's part of it. Yeah, I can tell. Yeah, it does. Ha- it does obviously take some musical. Because what was that Adele song I played for you? There's almost no musicality to it. There's a fire. But the music is just like. That's all I don't even think it changes the chorus. It's like. Dum, 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 dum. I don't, yeah, I don't even know if it's... It, anyway, yeah. And Brad is just like there just jamming out. The whole verse is being sung. And Brad's just like... And I'm, just, I have in, no in idea. Silence. <laughs> and it's like, this is awkward, so I'm going to be goofy with it. And then the chorus comes in, and then Brad just starts singing the exact song somehow. <laughs> like, how did you know that you went from nothing to just... I think there was, there was one change. There was like uh, a piano, you know, or whatever. I was like, oh, okay. The, one, the only one I couldn't get, which I was embarrassed... <laughs> Sir, I want to buy these shoes <laughs> yeah. for my mom. And like, I even, like, Crazy as I was listening shoes. to it, I was like, I know this is the chorus. And then I was like, I know this, here comes the bridge. And so it was a minor chord. And I was like, yep, that's the bridge. I don't know what song this is. <laughs> <laughs> you had to give me a hint on that one. But yeah, we yeah. had all fun with it. So we'll do that again. That was really um, fun. Yeah. We'll do it today, guys. We'll do it today. Don't worry. Don't even worry about it. Uh, let's see. What else? I don't have the our little agenda pull up in front of me. So, no problem. Let's do give, some uh, ghosties on a couch. Oh, okay, great, great, great. Some advice, a little advice session. Time and feel free to uh, answer some of these as well if you'd like to. Sounds good. Um, yeah, we we just sent out the uh, the bath signal a few hours ago on the bath bath signal, uh, dark bath signal. <laughs> um, hey, send us some uh, you know some bath some questions for advice. <laughs> um, I think we kind of talked about this last week. Actually, it's kind of fun that Rindle Weaver asked this again. Um, but I just I I could talk about this and I love even more hearing Jake talk about it um, all day. Uh, what has worked for Riddle Weaver asks What has worked for you in the YouTube game? Does higher quality always mean more views slash more dramatic thumbnails get people's attention? He's wanted to do a golf related. Oh yeah, uh, he's YouTube channel. I remember him telling about this when I met him in Pennsylvania. Um, higher production does not equal more views automatically. But it's a good way of setting yourself up for success, I would think. Like, that's a good, that's, that's, yeah, that's good advice. Like over time, people are going to enjoy watching higher quality versus lower quality. Yep, I would agree. Um, Thumbnails are, uh, how did Scott describe your pizza oven? A fickle beast. A fickle beast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thumbnails are a fickle beast. Uh, <laughs> like most algorithms and everything, I mean, it's always changing. So once you find something that works, it's probably going to change in like six months. But, I think just like psychologically, humans are drawn to faces. So I'm a big fan of, of putting at least one face up close. I, it just, it's human nature to be drawn to faces. People stop. Like if you're running a Facebook ad, if you're running just even the opening s- two seconds to an Instagram reel, don't start with just the pickleball paddle. Start with a human holding the pickleball paddle. I, so That's I think word. you can never go wrong with faces. So yeah, put at least somebody's face in there. My cousin is a wonderful photographer and he'll like, go to like Prague and all these really cool places and post all these pictures. And I scroll through every single one of them until he has a picture of him and his wife. And I look at those because it's a face. 
Uh, yeah, it's a great, great point. My problem as a photographer, and I don't photograph much, but even when I did, was like I would always zoom in too much just because I wanted the the person's face to be so big. I just wanted like tight shots of faces because I know that's what like makes people stop and scroll. But yeah. at the same time, you know, this girl's like, well, I was hoping you could maybe like show my, like the bottom half of my outfit or like my shoes. So it's like, yeah. well, I'll see about the algorithm. So <laughs> you're welcome. Um, but yeah, I'm always taking photos a little too tight, I feel like, because I just want like, like it's it's the face. Right. It's so important. Oh yeah. And it's just, yeah. Who I, cares I, about the your jeans? I've noticed that <laughs> when I uh, will film jean shorts, and I'm recording you. Oh yeah, you are a little tight on those because because you use your hands a lot, and I'm like, crap, I should back out. But I'm like, but to me, it looks so good, right? You know, punched in or whatever. So uh, I try to I try to go back a little bit. But um, hey, Rindle, well, let's say what we always say when we get done with these. Thanks, thanks for, for sitting, sitting on, on our couch. couch. Yeah. yeah, very good. <laughs> Timon would love for you to join in next time. Sounds good. It just makes us look bad when you don't join in when we all say our, yeah. our well, phrase. Yeah. Okay. Cody D. Similar. Um, on Cody the same, Davis. Go Bobcats. I need advice on starting skit comedy and comedy videos. How should I go about starting these? And what are some helpful tips in the process? I don't plan on it being a full time, but more or less on the side. How to start. You know what would be fun? If you have no presence online, try to become one of those people that people follow because they're so intrigued on like what's going on here. How, how's what's happening? I think that'd be so fun. Dude. Like to be a Tony P like yeah. start off being a Tony P start off being a Davis Clark or a Judah cause all these people we've looked at. Uh -huh. Like I think that's fun. Do it like ironically. And then a year from now, I'd be like, I was a genius the whole time. Uh huh. <laughs> I know what's up. What you, what's your advice time? And you're, you're starting to skit comedy. You've gone viral. <laughs> uh, well, AI. I feel like I, I'm yeah. Well, true, true, true. I don't know. I mean, have a have have it like start like something interesting or exciting at the beginning, which is kind of obvious. But like yeah, on yeah. a on a video short form platform, your first three seconds are your thumbnail. Yeah, mm, exactly. That's good. Um, Quick hook. But yeah, I don't know. I guess I, once I if I've see, once I've seen any success with the backseat boys thing, I have more ground to give advice. What about why like, do you think? Yeah, your video on your page that went viral, million yeah. views. Why do you think that went viral? Break it down for us. Reverse uh, it was, engineer. It was it. relevant because I was like a new. The AI thing was new. Okay. It might have had to do with the fact that I was very like enthusiastic and like good. I, it started off like immediately. Yeah. No it's wasted space. It was a perfect loop. Yeah. A perfect helped. loop that helps retention. I don't know. It was just helpful. I think it was like literally like you added value. value. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think that's great too. Well, okay, but like, what about logistically starting a skit comedy channel like you did? Like, mm -hmm. like I don't know, but anything. <laughs> I guess we could say the same thing, but like, yeah, literally, how do you, how do we, you know, edit it or what, what kind of, I think software are you guys using? Just you know? simply, it was, I think so much easier for us. Cause like I, I'm, I'm already your editor. Zach had some like podcast equipment cause he's like shooting a podcast for someone. You we got just like gear. happened to have the resources and just like a friend group that jokes all the time. So yeah. like, I think just like make something that has to do with what you already have. Yeah. Cause don't like spend a ton of money on something. If you don't already like have the access to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't think the, the gear is going to make or break it initially. Yeah, definitely. I think audio is more important than video even. Like your iPhone can do a very good job filming. So if you have an iPhone, yeah. you don't need to buy a camera if yeah. you're first starting. But make sure the audio is good. Sure or else you don't even have it. a video. Yeah. Steven Spielberg said audio is half the picture. Or sound is half the picture. That's a uh, real, that's cool. real quote. That's cool. I agree, Steve. Um, Shannon wants to know, is college worth it if you're not sure about what you want to do for a career? That is a tough question. I don't think not knowing what you want to do for a career is a good enough reason to not go to college. I think there's going to be more reasons than that because most 18-year-olds don't know what they want to do for a career. I I was 21 years old. I was a junior in college, and my advisor sat me down and was like, Jake, I think it's time you decide a major. And I was like, I've been noticing that other people <laughs> were doing that. Um, so that's a good idea. And even then, I chose one that had, had never existed yet. You know, uh -huh. I, I didn't know what I want to do for forever. So um, what's your name? Shannon. Shannon, gonna have to find a better reason than that to skip out on college, right? As okay. your father, Jake, why did you're you, going. Why did you go to college? Uh, I think my generation, this was like, we were taught, that this is how you get a job. Okay. Like you you just go to, yeah. you go to a college and you get a degree. And if you don't have one, it's gonna be very tough to get a, a good job is what we were taught. Because I think one of my main reasons for like not planning on college is because I feel like I wouldn't need it for anything specifically. I would agree. Yeah. Um, yeah. And that's, that's probably what she's asking. Or like, that's, that's the tough rub for me too. It's like, there's so much intangible things I gained from college, but so little intellectual things I gained. Totally. From Especially if you're a business major, like we were. Yeah. 
I mean, what can they teach you? I genuinely don't remember a single project <laughs> uh, like off the top of my head right now. And I can think of a lot of things off the top of my head right now. I cannot think of much that I did in college. I remember SWOT analysis. I remember uh, reading a book called The Sale. No, it wasn't The Sale. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, some book. And it, it was, yeah, it was about like a bottle. It was like supply chain or something. I remember every group project I was in, I was always only with women. And I just remember... I remember yeah. a high to heel, the heel that converts into a flat in seconds. <laughs> That's like your The product. girls were like, yes, it'd be really good. I was like, all right, cool. if you all think so, I guess. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's yeah. very hard to like, unless you're getting hands-on experience, it's very hard to teach someone business in a classroom setting. <sighs> yeah, uh, yeah. So I think it, there's, there's, a, there's a tension there because college is more and more expensive these days. And so I'm kind of, I, I'm definitely, I used to be on the team like, Go to college. It is such a great experience. You gotta go to college. You will you'll be so bummed that you missed out on those wonderful years of your life. And now as a dad, maybe like thinking a little bit differently, I'm almost like, I don't think you have to go to college. Like I'm right there with you. Cause it used to be like, oh, if you don't go, you're missing out on so much. Yeah. It's like it is expensive. Well, even with Isaac, like Isaac is a great example of like, I told him he should go to college. I was like, you should go. Mm -hmm. Like everyone else your age is gonna go. It's not like you're gonna be behind if you go. Yeah. And if it doesn't work out, great, go do the business thing. And he decided not to, and I think it's worked out just fine for him. Yep. You know, I don't think he's, and I think if he was trying to find a corporate job, I don't think it would be that difficult for him to be like, well, I have five years of experience running my own business. Mm -hmm. It was successful. Uh, I've been on a podcast a couple of times. Like, yeah, but you don't have a degree. It's like, you could also fake it. <laughs> <laughs> I've never shown a single, I don't know where I could prove it. If I, I don't to. have one, I didn't go to chapel <laughs> enough times. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> like, I don't know if, if, if I said, yeah, I was just like, I got my business degree from K state. I don't think anybody would be like, Oh yeah. Where, where are the records? Let me see them. <laughs> oh yeah. Prove it, mister prove it, buddy. So I would say Frank Abagnale, that thing. It's hard to say anything definitively because we don't have the context at all of where you're at, but Unless you are in a position like Timon or like where Isaac was, or at least see skills in yourself where you're like, yes, I am a self-starter. You at least need to see the personality traits to know, like, I'll be all right on my own. I would say go to college. Col yeah. College is awesome. I'd be interested to hear how if people regret going to college. Because in our experience, we have no regrets about college. Yeah. Even though we didn't get the thing you're supposed to like. <laughs> the thing we were promised and, you know, we kind of went there and originally to get didn't end up mattering at all. But we got so many other... Th yeah, anyway. Yeah. Uh, Joanna wants to know what color they should paint their front door. Newly moved here and it is bright sunshine yellow, but not happy like the sun. Sticks out like a sore thumb against a nicely tan house. Tan house. Oh, tan and bright yellow. That's... Yeah. Hmm. I'm not great with tan. I'll go white. I guess I have tan on. White. Bread. Um, I think white's a good door color. Hey, Jerry, you stole mine. We had... <laughs> White, no, white, white is going to show all the, all the smudges and the dirt. Mm. Give me uh, black. We had a red <laughs> door for a while, red front door at our house. Wow. I think that's fun. And our house was blue for a long time. So it was just like big blue house with a red door. <laughs> it, was it was like a kid drew it. It's yeah. like, all right, yeah. you want to draw a house? <laughs> yeah. I think I only have four crayons. So. Okay, I'm, I'm changing <laughs> my Honestly, answer. the more I think about it, it is kind of like a kid drew it. Like, <laughs> there's like two little like window things that like stick out like, like dormers mini like mini yeah, house yeah. like roof things mm -hmm. on them it's like just like how i would draw a house yeah you draw a little triangle on That's top a of a square yeah <laughs> good word on the door yeah, chimney thanks yeah chimney. I like, chimney i'm changing my answer to barn door red mm. barn door red that's fun yeah hey it's gonna, it's gonna be different but not like whoa sunshine yellow joanna <laughs> thanks for sitting on our couch just me again guys all right <laughs> uh your mamasaurus rex uh, she said, that's my real name. Uh, what age should I let my child start dating? 16. 16? I don't know. I've never thought about this before ever. Okay. <laughs> Timon? Um, Do you guys have any rules? Have you heard anything about that? Not Honestly, not talked about much. Yeah. But my logic is, what's the point until you're old enough to get married? That's, okay. that's just my logic. But yeah. hey. When I are you old enough to get married? Sure. No. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, he said when when are, when oh, are, when are you oh, old enough? What, um, what age is that? And time and the answer well, I mean, was like absolutely. <laughs> I thought you were I thought you were like agreeing with me. Um I mean there's legal ages, but I don't know. I think just like when you're I think it's maturity. Okay. So yeah. it's a, it's a little yeah, subjective. So yeah, it could fluctuate. I don't know. A little spectrum. Hmm. Does yeah. she say how developed her son or daughter is? 
She sent a picture. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> man, I don't know. I, this, is a, this is a tough one, I, and I haven't experienced it. I mean, I've experienced it as a kid, but not as a parent. But to me, it seems like even if you try to like extinguish that in your kid, they're still going to quote unquote date. Like what, what does that mean to date somebody these days? Like you can still easily talk to a girl on the, on your phone, even if you're not dating her, you know what I mean? Yeah. You're not, going, like you're not hanging out as much, I guess. If that's like your one thing as a parent that you're so strong on, that might be the thing that like turns them away. Like, well now I just want to do it even harder. <laughs> exactly. You know, like, <laughs> well, well my parents are pretty chill. They just really don't want me to date. Okay, yeah. well, why are they like gatekeeping that? Now I now I'm way more attracted to girls than I thought I was. Yeah. I'm so curious. <laughs> yeah. I think yeah, as a parent and as a person, you see like it's probably not worth a whole lot of like putting your energy into in high school, but you can't tell a high schooler that because they that's all they know is the high school life. Like they don't totally. that's their like it's a huge deal to them. Like mm -hmm. this girl liking him or not, whatever. So uh my answer, when she, I like I like uh I like senior year of high school. Sure. Unless they don't, unless they're homeschooled and then senior high school would be like 12. So <laughs> we'll say 13. <laughs> um, okay. This is a fun one from Grace Fairly. Um, what to do when someone gets your name wrong? I often get called Gracie and it's not my fave. Do you correct them? Casually slip into a conversation or proudly take on a new name until the end of time? Uh, yeah, I've been there taking on a new name before. I think it depends like how long, like how long do you expect this relationship to last with this person? Like you just met someone at work and they get your name wrong, you probably need to correct them in like a fun way. Uh -huh. But if it's like a one day friend, the girl at the coffee shop was like, "Okay, Gracie got it." You let it let it yeah. ride. There was a woman at uh, church the other day. We were walking down the hall, and I just hear her go, "Caitlin," and Catherine looks back, "Hi." Like this girl says hi to Catherine, and you know we're walking. I was like, "Oh, Kate, we're over here. We're over here, Kate." She's like, "Why are you calling me that?" <laughs> <laughs> and then we say this girl again in the hall, and I'm like. Caitlin, come on, let's. Cato. Kate, it's time. It's time to get home. <laughs> kids, kids are getting tired. Just to reinforce it. Yeah, as a husband, you've either got to come in and, and speak for Catherine and be like, "Oh, hey," you know, yeah. and like correct it for her so Catherine doesn't have to, or you just really convince the other girl that she's got it right. I did the same thing with yesterday. We were at Chick Fil A with like, I was at Chick Fil A with my friends, and my friend Gabby got told got called Debbie. She oh was wow, like Gabby, and then it was like, okay, Debbie. It was like just taking her order. So I just like, yeah, called we called her Debbie kind of the rest of the time there. That's yeah. fun. Oh, little Gabby. Little Debbie. Man. Yeah. Or just like the passive, not a passive aggressive, but just like find someone else to introduce yourself to where, while they are in your shot, you know, mm -hmm. like you get called Gracie and it's like, Hey, I'm Justin. Oh, hi, I'm Grace. You're like looking back. Like you hear that? <laughs> yeah. You hear that buddy? Yeah. Thought you'd catch that. <laughs> oh, so, so you, your name is Gracie, but you want to go by Grace and they're like, sure. Yeah. yeah. Whatever. Whatever. Good. Enough. Um, okay. How about, um, I feel like we get some some semblance of this question a lot. Joseph wants to know, how do you guys find a balance between work, family, friends, and church? It seems like I can only give 100% to one thing at a time. Oh, wow. <laughs> that, is, that, is, that is one of the hardest things I feel like growing up is, is learning that you can't do everything well. Like you can't do too many things. I mean, I don't think either of us would say we are super, super involved in our church, correct? Yeah, I've, I, I'm not even a member, actually, because you have to attend four Sundays in a row, and that, that's not possible with my schedule. <laughs> yeah. so, um, but I do think I'm going to volunteer. They're doing their own summer camp. And so I talked to oh, them, and I was cool. like, hey, yeah, here are my credentials. <laughs> plug me in wherever you want to plug me in. Cool. So yeah, I had that conversation with them Sunday. Yeah, I don't... Uh, yeah, I think uh, you have to find realistic expectations between all of them. Uh, but I think one just really practical thing you can do to help yourself just be present more often is not being addicted to your phone or not being like <laughs> not wasting time, like learning how to be as efficient as you can with your time so that you can give more when you're present. Um, but I know that's not like it doesn't, it doesn't automatically give you more time, but like if you are with a friend and you are having a solid conversation for 45 minutes with that person or like whatever, an hour, that's a really great time. And then you're like, okay, I am done with this time. Mm -hmm. and I need to go. I'm sorry. Um, because so often I think Catherine and I, we struggle to find the amount of time. But if it's like, well, we had a really good conversation for 20 minutes today, that's way better than like us sitting around for an hour on our phones and talking intermittently kind of thing. You know what I mean? That's a great point. So I yeah, focus on the quality of time rather than the quantity yeah, of time. Like, yeah. you know, don't want to break it up. Like, all right, well, I'm going to spend two hours at church. Right. 
during the service, an hour volunteering. Okay, that's three hours there. You know, and be can't there. Look at it. Be present yeah. there. Put it all in there, and then be like, okay, I'm I, I can confidently be like, I'm I'm I've done enough here. I don't have to be like, well, I don't know, I wasn't really present here, so maybe I should stay another thirty minutes or whatever. Yeah, you know, um, so. wherever you are, be all there. Remember that one from back in the day. I like it. <laughs> oh, I think it was like such a cliche. Maybe in the SBU circles it was, yeah. but that was a big one. It was like right there with hang up and hang out. I was you know, when, say, when that just I came out. That. Yeah. Yeah. Um, let's see. House buying advice for a first time home buyer. Well, that's Think, fun. Things what to a look fun for. Stage of life. Yeah. This is Katie. Things to look for and what to stay away from. Getting married in November, we want to have a house ready to move into before then. Uh, you're probably not going to find the perfect house. So know what you're willing to budge on, what you're not willing to budge on. Mm-hmm. I'd say no. I have a pretty good idea whether you're a DIY couple or you're not a DIY couple. Mm-hmm. Don't get overzealous in you know, like knowing, hey, we're not real handy. We don't want to do that. And then you, once you're looking at a house, like, all right, well, some stuff broken, but we could probably fix it, right? Like, be be logical about it. Don't yeah. be emotional about it. That's good. Be logical. I I'm, I'm not gonna say the opposite of that, but I do think Peter talks about this. He's a real estate agent, and he's like, so many home buyers are so uncreative when it comes to painting or like oh, like yeah. you walk into a house and you see whoa this brightly yellow door i can't have this house an orange living room it's this like, house is gross if that's all it, like ima- <laughs> just imagine this with a different color yeah it's amazing ai how- is good enough i bet you could take a photo of that and swap out together. jake allen could probably do it for you dude you look at real estate listings and you see like they have furniture like added to rooms mm, and stuff yeah 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 jake allen could rock it in figure the ha- it out heartbeat so just trying to be creative in that regard i mean we bought our house and it was like a little bit of a DIY. We've done stuff to it, but not anything like super drastic. We haven't taken out walls or anything like that. We've just painted everything, basically. We walked in and it looked like your grandma's house. It was like, you know, wood paneling everywhere. And we painted it. I mean, this house, look, this is wood paneling here. And how much different would it be if this was just dark brown, this whole room, mm-hmm. you know? Um, so, uh, yeah, just be creative in that regard. Catherine's so good at like thinking of the process of everything, like so much more critical than I am. I'm always just like, yeah, cool. The garage looks cool. Yeah. Nice, nice looking place. Like what about the lights? Like I didn't even look at the lights. Yeah, I, like, I mean, imagine, yeah, the, the, the laundry's on the very bottom floor and our, you know, we were two floors up from the laundry like that. That could be a problem, you know, or okay. Yeah. There's no bath. We're going to have kids and I don't know all these different things that I'm like, I don't know. We'll just figure it out. So I don't really, really think I have much to say other than just like get people you trust helping you because yes. that's why I've had good luck or what do you want to call it? Good experience with home buying. Yep. But I think it's because I didn't get in the way. I let the people who are good at what they do just do it and tell me and give me good advice. Yeah. Yeah. Like translate whatever that just means. You said something about the electrical downstairs that you're using your flashlight to look at down there. Yeah. Like, what you're worried that about this? No. All what right. Me neither. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, yeah. Last tip. This is a bad piece of advice. You ready good. for this? Whenever you get the inspection done and there's some red flags, don't worry about them. You think this house didn't have some red flags after the inspection? I didn't worry about them. We're doing just fine. All right. <laughs> the inspect. Well, I will say the inspection, the inspector is like, that's his job is to find every little issue. Yeah. And so therefore he's going to come back with a list of 150 things. Genuinely, maybe like, well, the doorknob's shaky. This lock doesn't work. Yeah. You know, it's like, oh my gosh, we're buying a piece of crap. Yeah. <laughs> And then you realize like, okay, maybe two of those are a big enough deal to ask the buyer about. Yeah. That reminds me of like looking for like any kind of thing on eBay. Like I like read the description. It's mm-hmm. like a few scuffs, like cosmetic. Yeah. Items. I'm like, oh, I can't use this. And I'm like <laughs> looking at anything I use and, right. and I'm like, oh, this is like scratched all over, but totally. it's like great work. Fine. Yeah. Few scuffs. <laughs> no, thanks. Yeah. Right, People do buddy. that with golf balls. Like really like purist golfers like ah i scuffed it <laughs> like i that does not affect the play of the golf ball. i guarantee you it doesn't um so yeah that's fun my inspection was color coded and i remember it was like green not that big of a deal orange intermediate and then red and i had a few red ones <laughs> we're fine yeah we like changed like we had them uh switch out the electrical panel or something like that and maybe do one plumbing thing that was it and have you ever had a house fire or a drowning situation House fire, kind of in the chimney that one time. <laughs> that was aside from the electrical, but yes, we did have kind of a house fire. <laughs> Thanks for bringing that up, Jacob. I forgot about that. Oh, man. Okay. Oh, uh, Katie, 
Th- Katie, thanks, thanks, thanks for, for laying on our couch. <laughs> sitting on our couch. <laughs> Thank yeah, you, Timon. That's right. Thanks, Timon. <laughs> Bring it back. Um, okay, Anna is graduating college in May, and she is terrified. Why? Don't be terrified. Uh, my degree is in photography, and I would love to be a sports or wedding photographer. Any advice? Jake, you've done this. Sports and weddings seem kind of different. One is a lot faster than the other. <laughs> You're going to need to get variety. different shutter speeds probably, right, guys? Yeah. Yeah. Good. Good. Good job. Um, wedding photography, though, you've you've done that. or Done it a time or you've two. done video more. Yeah. How, how'd, how'd you get in the game? Uh, you get in by having a friend trust you, and you do it for next to no money. And then you use that, you take it, you build your whole Instagram, your brand, your website off of that one wedding. And don't be afraid to post to Facebook. I know you're 22, I know you're young, but your mom's friends, your dad's friends are on Facebook and they want to support you. Mm. So post it on Facebook. Somebody is always getting married. Don't be afraid to annoy people. Post. Yep. And next time someone gets married, they're like, hey, Jolene's daughter's taking up photography. Seriously. Except they'll call it photography. And that's normal. For- that's how they say it <laughs> at that age. She's doing uh, photographing. And maybe I could uh, talk to her. And so you do that. And I mean, if you have a college degree in photography, you are way more talented than most people doing, or at least more educated yeah. than most people doing wedding photography. I was going to yes. say, I'm like, we should be asking her for advice. Like, <laughs> yeah, like, you're doing it a, a different route. Officially educated on it. Yeah. So maybe the business side is what we should be giving more advice on, which is good. I think I'm such a fan of like post more than you think you should, because not everyone's seeing every single post you're posting. Like, like you're always like, oh, maybe I'm annoying people with how many times I've posted about my business. And it's like, yeah, no one else is paying as much attention as you are for your business. So it's tough. I wouldn't necessarily know, let's just think out loud here, how to market myself as a photographer. Because I know back in, well, even now I, I follow photographers and it's confusing because I see their feed and I'm like, who are these people? And then I see who's posted by. I'm like, oh, that's them. You know, because you're constantly yeah. posting strangers to your feed. So it's a yeah. hard way to market yourself through social media. I've never like, I mean, I'm not a great person at this, but obviously with furniture and stuff, um, I'm posting more of the furniture than I am of me. And I've always kind of looked at it as like the stories are more me. The like posts are more. You're talking about my, Instagram stories, not the story of the sorry, table. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. Like posting stories of my kids every once in a while or something that's more personal. Like, oh, this is a real person behind this business, but here's the finished product on the posts. But I don't know if that's the greatest thing because I don't know how many people are looking to post these days. Another idea I just had, if you're just starting out, think write down 10 different ways to take a picture of a bride that you've never seen before. And then get one of your friends, pay for her like to rent a wedding dress for a day. It'll be fun for her, fun for you. And go take each one of those photos and start posting it. Post it on Pinterest, Instagram, Twitter, everywhere. And hopefully one of them like catches the algorithm and goes viral because it was so unique and original. And then you get business. Yeah, There's an idea. You're in. That'd be awesome. Um, okay. Andy with an I, I have five days of PTO to use before October. What's the absolute <laughs> best way to maximize my time? Uh, I wish we knew what Andy was into. Yeah. Do it with, uh, yeah. You gotta, you gotta like bank it with some holidays. Like if a holiday's on a Monday, you take a Tuesday off and, and you, you live leave. And, and, and you come so early on Friday morning. And that, that you leave at like noon <laughs> and no one gets upset with you. And all of a sudden you got most of Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, five days for one day off. Yeah. I think you just got to follow like a passion or a hobby or something. Something that's always seemed like, ah, I can't really do that. I can't, I can't go fly fishing right when this, right when the salmon are sprouting. <laughs> I'm always at work during then. Uh-huh. This is your year, Andy. Yes. So just do, just splurge on your hobby. Get out of town. Let your hair down. That'd be my advice. Let your hair down. Let your hair down. Yeah. Uh, okay. Fictional is the name. Oh, because the name on the... I, I said your name, real or fictional? Fictional. Uh, online dating, yay or nay? Uh, man, it's so concrete, so black and white. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I, I did the apps for a little bit, and while I was there, uh, was hoping I wouldn't find my wife there while also trying to find my wife there. You know, just like... I don't want this to be how mm. I'd rather like meet her in person. And I'm glad I did. But at the same time, I was like, if this is how it needs to happen, like you ever seen those, like almost like cartoons or just like symbolisms of like, you know, there's someone like on a deserted Island and they're praying to God. They're like, 
rescue me, rescue me, rescue me. And God's like, I sent you like a boat, basically. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's like, sure. I think sometimes we're just like, I want this a certain way. And God's like, I've given you yeah. opportunities here. Yeah, you're just not taking the opportunity mm-hmm. presented. Or you're not seeing it or whatever, yeah. Yeah, it does seem, I was about to say a necessary evil. That's probably even too extreme of a statement for it. But it does seem like one of those things these days where, I don't know. I mean, especially as you get older, it seems like it's harder and harder to like, just casually meet somebody without it being like, whoa, this guy's talking to me, unless it's online. Totally. Right? I mean, I went years being in Kansas City and all my friends were married. I and mean, you guys weren't meeting other single people to hook me up with. Like there was no <laughs> word of mouth happening. It was like, well, maybe I'll see someone at church. Right. But I would never approach a girl to try and date her. So that's not going to work. Uh, you know, so yeah, it is tough. So apps can help. <clears throat> okay. Let's do one more uh, okay. for today, and we can we we appreciate all the uh, uh, all the submissions here. Um, eh, bonus one. This is kind of a fun thing to think about. Ryan Pittman wants to know who would win a foot race, Trump or Biden. I think Biden wins that race. Really? You think? Do I think? I think he's. I don't know. You see him? He bikes. I mean, he yeah, he falls off bikes, but he's <laughs> he's biking. I don't know. Then Trump. I feel like Trump could do though. Trump can still golf. Do you think they would just both walk? <laughs> uh, genuinely like, like fast I, think, walk. I think biden would run very like i think, think he, he would could get both feet off the ground at the same time like doing a running motion i think so i think he would jog very slowly and trump would walk i originally i was thinking trump but i'm kind of with you now he is kind of spry like i could see him kind of just like doing an old man jog like, his arms are barely pumping like all those videos of him like falling down like going up the uh airplane stairs yeah, he is kind he's kind of he's kind of hot he's got a little he's got a little like spring tool. and he falls quick you know yes. he's got good you know quick twitch muscles aerodynamics uh-huh. <laughs> yeah cuts yeah, through the air it, i think it's biden in a by a landslide I, just, I think my initial thought was because I've seen Trump move more. I think, well, I just, I, you see like him like dancing or whatever, but like, yeah, it depends on how long this race is too. Like Ooh, I'm, I'm imagining four years, let's call it a hundred, right? <laughs> let's call it a hundred meters, you know, that would be fun. That's a pretty long, they should like, do that. <laughs> that would be awesome. There's like the end of a winner debate. take all. <laughs> <laughs> that's how it's, that's how it's decided. Uh, okay. Let's see one more. Um, Hmm. This one's interesting because I bet we have different answers for it. Brock wants to know, what does budgeting look like in your life at this time? Are there certain limits you put towards certain items or categories? Is there a money amount you have to talk to your spouse before purchasing a specific item? Just overall thoughts on budgeting. I'm going to let you handle this one. Okay. <laughs> It'd be fun to talk <laughs> Me about. Me and Ty are in the same stage of budgeting right now. So. <laughs> well, yeah. But like, what about like that, that other question about like, is there a money amount you have to talk to Rachel about? We have not went over that yet. Yeah. Yeah, I don't um, know. I think just in general, for the most part, it feels like we we both trust each other pretty well with money. Like as far as yeah, like hey, FYI, I bought this thing, or you know, like even like Catherine will go to the chiropractor, and sometimes she'll be like, I think one of the kids needs adjusted for this, and it costs a little bit of money to do that. But she like sometimes she like tries to justify it to me, and I'll stop her and be like, Listen. I trust you. I, yeah. we don't need to talk about that. Like, uh, and, and it's, one of those it's things a nice like, quality though. So it is a nice uh, quality. Know. And I think luckily Jake and I are getting to the point where we have more money than we used to. And so therefore we're not worried about, it's not as much about budgeting as much, or it's not as much about like limiting your spending as much as like changing. Okay. We spent a lot of money at the chiropractor this month. Therefore we're not spending money on clothes this month or on Balloons. some other, you know, discretionary thing. Balloon yeah. budget. Dave Ramsey calls it the pocket fund or whatever. Um, yeah. Just recently, Rachel did a similar thing. She was, uh, I was busy doing something. So she had to drive herself to the airport and it was pouring down rain and she was running late. And I was like, well, Hey, go to this, go do garage parking and just pay for it. She's like, Oh, I bet that's expensive though. Uh, I was like, just please do it. You yeah, know? And yeah, she's yeah. like, okay, we'll see. And I was like, just, just do it. <laughs> like, yeah. just it's fine. We can cover garage parking. Like, economy. You have to wait on a shuttle in the rain. Like, just we're good. You can we, you can do garage parking. Right. And we we have wives that are, well, first of all, I mean, Catherine doesn't make money. Like, she, I make the money for our family, and so I think sometimes she feels a little bit more like she has to ask for like as for certain dollar amounts or whatever. Whereas, like, if I know I'm going to buy a fifteen hundred dollar tool for the business, I'm not going to be like. FYI, I'm thinking about buying this thing. It's just like, I know the finances. So I, I'm definitely the, 
you know, in Dave Ramsey culture, there's the nerd and the free spirit. Hmm. Um, there's one person that just kind of leans towards, you know, the accounting side more than the other. I'm definitely the nerd in our relationship, in our marriage. And so I know our budget. I also use Dave Ramsey's every dollar to like budget things out. And that really helps a lot because then, and, and it's different for Jake and I, because we are, we are entrepreneurs that we, we don't have the same income every month, which is great and bad. <laughs> um, but it's great on the months that it's like, oh, we made more than we expected. Therefore, we can budget to different things. And so um, I'm a big fan of like saving up for certain things and not buying them until you have saved for them. So, um, yeah, overall, I think it's just it's something that you just develop trust in your spouse as far as like, listen, you don't have to justify why you bought this as long as you as long as you have regular conversations that are like, here's what the budget is. If you notice, it's like, hey, we are struggling for money. And, and then you see your spouse change behavior because of that, then you don't have to talk about everything. Yeah, it's it's nuanced. I think if Rachel yeah. had a history or a pattern of like bad spending, then it's like, hey, let's talk about what each of us are going to spend or something. Sure. Like, yeah. Hey, we should both try and lose weight. You no, know, when you like <laughs> suggest it, like it was, you know, we, this is good for both of us. Right. Um, but no, Rachel's good about it. Okay. Um, that is going to end the on a couch. Wasn't there one question about good ranchers? What did that one say? Oh, yeah. It just said, where do you recommend getting the best meat for the best price at the best quality in the entire United States? So that's what's fun is I knew you were just going to pick up. I was like, <laughs> I, I, he's not going to like scroll. Like, I didn't see one about good ranchers. <laughs> oh, shoot. Let me uh, yeah scroll through that. Man, the F good ranchers here. <laughs> yeah. So, well, the one I was, sorry, there is one at the bottom. The oh. one I saw said, any way to get rid of mRNA uh -huh. in uh, pigs and stuff? I don't know ding, personally. Ding. Oh, yeah. sorry. What? I don't know personally how to do it scientifically. I don't know how that all works. I couldn't remove it for you, <laughs> but I know of a way where you it can just start off with mRN. No, mRN. Nay. <laughs> I'm raising my hand. All, all in favor of mRNA. All opposed. mRNA. <laughs> <laughs> And yes, it said do the fake parliamentary procedure <laughs> skit about good ranchers meat. Okay, cool. We nailed that. Uh, who wants free ham? Possibly. In. <laughs> Yay! On the free ham. A uh, little, little Easter ham, little holiday ham. Honey baked. Hey! A little honey baked. Hey-o. Uh, coming your way. I have been scrolling for 15 minutes and I can't find what it tells us to say, but... Listen, you don't need to hear it from no, me. No, no. There are mRNA <laughs> vaccines being used on pigs in the United States. I knew it was pigs. Good Ranchers has pledged to keep the mystery out of the meat. What's, what's going on with the meat? I don't know. I don't know. You know exactly what's going on with the mystery, <laughs> with the Good Ranchers meat. There's no mystery there. Good Ranchers exists to be a source of transparent truth for American families looking to shop for products they can't trust. With conversations being sparked around the use of mRNA vaccines and animals, we decided to draw the line. There's the line. Draw a line in the sand. Our products are 100% American and 0% mRNA vaccine. You can see the whole pledge. They have it. Say mRNO.com. That's kind of fun. See the whole that. thing. But at the end of the day, just know it is not only the best tasting, but it is the healthiest meat you can buy on the market. Buy GoodRanchers.com right now. 10-pound Easter ham, any subscription. $119 for that 10-pound ham. For free. For free. And no mRNA in it. American meat delivered. Get it delivered to your house. I was genuinely talking. I, I got a haircut right before this. I was talking to my barber just organically, no pun intended, <laughs> about good ranchers. Trapper bite. Oh. <laughs> I mean, it was just like, I mean, yeah, he's spry, but I mean, have you seen, you know. He falls off Oh, also these, these skirt steaks for good ranchers. No. <laughs> um, just check them out. Goodranchers.com. GRKC. It's American Meat Delivered. GRKC is our discount for them. Just please, please support them as we uh, continue to be supported by them. Bada bing. Bada, bada bing, bada boom. Uh, okay, let's do a really quick, let's see how this goes. Memory lane. Um, <laughs> Great. How long, where, where are we at so far, Timon? About hour and a half, a little more. Okay. About, about, maybe not about hour and a half. <laughs> All right, let's just go. Uh, so, so I had this idea, I don't know, uh, called memory lane, and I'm just going to find, I'm, I'm searching random word generator, and we're just going to pull up some words, and if they remind us of anything, we tell a story about it. Great. Memory lane. Trip down memory lane. Hey, take a little trip. Who knows what's going to come from this? So, all right. Uh, first random word is bite. Bite? Bite. Uh, first thing that comes to mind from my childhood is like biting into an apple and you couldn't get it. 
So then you pull your teeth back out of it, and then you see an imprint of your teeth. You're like, oh, that's kind of fun. That's okay. what my teeth look like. Yeah. It's like, whoa, look at that. That's a little jagged at the top. Okay. I can't think of anything, so that's I, great. I no bite? Something. Horses, bite. probably. Bite. Classic. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> oh, wait. Yeah, actually, wait. Now that you mentioned that, so grew up with horses in our pasture, yeah. like, yeah. my whole life. One time, my little no brother- likes bragger, but- my, <laughs> We could afford horses were, pretty easily. They were boarded at our- it was, No, um, yeah. but my little brother, Jesse, when he was probably like- three or four mm-hmm. he's like well maybe three i don't know sitting in this like uh sort of pushable like little car thing it's like a little car you sit in strap your like okay. kid in and like push him on a walk or something like that he's sitting in this i don't know why but he's like beside like right by the fence to the pasture and he's buckled into this thing so right next like nearby this horse is like grazing they like to like stick their head like over the fence to get to like the oh, fresher grass the on the good other grass side. yeah and so just like making its way down and, like, I, I can't remember if we were inside, but, like, so, I don't know. He wasn't being, like, closely watched or something like that. Some, suddenly we look over, and this horse has, I think it's, like, chilly outside. So Jesse's got, like, a some kind of stocking cap on. <laughs> I don't know. And, this is why we do memory lane right here, baby. <laughs> and so I think the horse, like, now I can't remember exactly how it happened. And some of this may be, uh, like, changed by my, because yeah, yeah. now, I'm, now I'm thinking, is this possible? I don't know. <laughs> But I'm fairly sure that the story goes like he, like basically the horse somehow like bit onto his like hat or something. Picked him up. And lifted him and the like car thing off the ground. <laughs> no way. So there's, there's Maybe a bite he had one story. Maybe those, those hats with the, like the. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah, it was now. secure Cause somehow. Because now I'm like, wait, it's, if it's a stocking cap, it's just going to. If it, or if it's the hood of but his so, coat. Oh, wait. Yes. Yes. <laughs> that was it. That was it. Okay. it was, he was wearing like a hoodie or something. Yeah, that'll do it. That makes more sense. Dude. But yeah. That's amazing. That's yeah. awesome. And we would have never heard that story. I, hadn't, I haven't thought about that for a long time. Thanks yeah. for going down memory, memory lane. lane. And sit oh. on the ca- memory lane. It's <laughs> got a single little jingle of what you said was better. <laughs> <laughs> All right. How about um, applaud? Applaud? Applaud. 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 That was a no pair. Applaud. applaud. I got something. Go off. These keep me like the things that kind of have to do with them. Here's no, that's great. That's, first that's... time kind of ever like on a stage. It was with um the first choir I was in when I was like probably nine or nine or so. I was in this choir at the culture house in Kansas City before mm-hmm. we did Greenleaf. Shout um, out to Star Peterson. Uh and we basically like were part of this like Child of Hope show. Okay. And we're singing like a song in it. And we go up on stage for like to rehearse. And I just it was my first time realizing how different it is being on stage rather than watching. Because the like just the blinding lights. Can't see anyone. First first time ever being like, whoa. You can't see people at all. Like I'm like I don't know where my mom is. Uh-huh. Anyway, that was there's applause, and we got, probably got applauded. Yeah. Probably Eventually. there was applause. I remember my first time applauding after getting married, and it hurt. I was like, oh, I'm gonna have to clap different now. Okay, because where where my ring finger is hitting hurts. So interesting. I made the adaptation. Pretty smart. I I just, I'm, I'm still having a hard time thinking of uh, great memories here. <laughs> uh, I was uh, a funny character in a play. In elementary school, it was a Lewis and Clark play, and I was the Frenchman, Charbonneau, and I was funny, and people laughed at me, and I thought, that's pretty fun to make people laugh. Um, that's about it. Little did you know. Little Little did you know. You'd be a (laughs) Frenchman full-time. All right, how about (laughs) victory? You got any victory stories? I'll say one. I don't know if I've talked about this on the podcast before, but uh, I used to play Salvation Army bitty ball, little, little basketball. Uh, with my friends, and we were in the championship game, and we were down by one point. And it was like fourth, fifth grade, so it was like old enough to where we were all obsessed with shooting three-pointers, but the coach got so mad when we shot (laughs) three-pointers. And I remember at the end of the game, we had the ball, and our coach just goes, shoot a three if you have to. And me back in the day, I had the worst form ever, literally like kind of one-hand shot always. And I shot put a three-ball in the hoop. (laughs) Perfect game winner, training. game winner. And, but there was like wow. five seconds left, and our coach ran out on the court oh. and gave me a hug, <laughs> like, like pick me up. Yeah, and they called a technical on my coach. Fourth grade, yeah, wow. Salvation Army. You know, very technical. <laughs> uh, and the guy shot free throws, but didn't make them. And so we Ooh. won. Coach got his job back. Uh-huh. <laughs> it was and assistant was coach nervous. too. You know, oh, it, was like, man. It, was, it was like a vibes guy. Like we need, we need Adam there for the vibes. He was there to hug the kids <laughs> <laughs> when they made baskets. Anyway. I thought of just one victory one. It was just like the memory of watching 
the first Narnia movie for the first time when I was like eight or nine. And like that battle scene, I, I want to watch it for the first time again. <laughs> really? That's a great battle. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, Hattie and Catherine are so into Narnia right now. Yeah. They did, they've um, read two, maybe three of the books. The now. books are so good. Oh, Hattie yeah. was just obsessed. She's like reading the silver chair now. Yeah. I don't, I don't, I, I, I didn't grow up reading them, so I don't know. I remember that book being kind of scary when I read it. Okay. I good don't remember know. how old I was, but yeah. You got anything for victory? Not really. I like high school basketball. We like won every game at home for like two years. That was pretty sweet. Was it? So a good you knew you had a home game. You're like, we're getting a victory. Yeah. Yeah, it was. It was awesome. Whole town would come. That's awesome. Yeah, dude. It was awesome. I remember when I got the K Life job, going to Shawnee Mission East. I mean, this is a six A school. They're three times the size of what Stratford was, and no one was there. The gym was smaller, and no one w- could fill it. Yeah, I was like, whoa! I had a good thing in high school. I had totally. no idea. Oh yeah. When it's only one school in one town and there's not a lot of activities, it's everybody like, comes. This is, what, this is what everyone does on Friday night. Or yeah, whatever. And if your team is good, it probably helps a little bit. But still, oh, man. yeah, that was the best. There, I think. I think basketball gyms, like high school gyms, there's oh. something. I mean, as far as America goes, it's got to be on the top 10 list of things for America. It's like high school basketball and yeah. the gym that you go to and the energy of a close game. Oh, my gosh. It's, it's so there's fun. nothing like it, dude. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But yeah, I was our, our high school was the same way where it was like the big games, all the students came, but so many of them were like, oh, I'm not going to that one. Mm. We'll wait till we'll eat the East, you know. Wow. Yeah. Every Every home basketball game, the football players would say what the theme was and then all the other girls... They would just like do a theme together, and yeah. it was awesome. I know. They would dress up every game. If you're in high school right now, do that. Start it. Make it happen. Uh, okay, what about mole? Anything for mole? Oh, yeah. Back on the far. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Um, it's plenty. Oh, you probably yeah. have a phony phrase based on this because <laughs> it's an animal. Um, oh, was that I, what you thought of? Was a, was an animal? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, back at Stratford, we have moles all the time. And uh, didn't matter which dog we had at the time, which one was, you know, on its way of being hit by a car, or which one we just got from the pound, but <laughs> they were good at digging up moles and all kind of the same behavior. They dig them up and just carry them around their mouth and just play with them. Alive? Yeah. They wouldn't kill them or anything. It was just kind of this fun toy, just like a friend. Really? Yeah. They just dig up moles and maybe like have in their mouth and just shake them and throw them and then go and get them again. And the mole <laughs> would try to dig into the ground as fast as it could, and they'd pull them back out again. That sounds like a pretty fun game. <laughs> it was a fun game for the dogs. And yeah, they just walk around with them and kind of watch them and watch where they'd run, and they start digging, they'd pull them back out again. And so... How big are, are moles? Like a little bigger than a mouse, or oh, like a wow. little bigger than a rat, maybe. Okay. Pretty small. Yeah, Smaller pretty small. than a squirrel. Yeah, 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 for sure. Okay. Yeah, mouse rat size. Okay. Um, fun. Black, maybe blind. But uh, blind as a mole, blind as a mole. That's yeah. my funny phrase. Um, but yeah, I remember my dad was saying, yeah, those moles just tearing up our lawn. I, was like, I don't know. Te- they're tearing up the lawn. <laughs> I mean, there's like a four inch. Yeah. Little of elevation bit. where yeah. they've been burrowing. But yeah, that's, bothersome. That's so interesting. Yeah. Because I don't know if I've ever encountered a mole in my life. And you were like, oh, plenty of mole stories. Oh, yeah. It was fun to see. I remember Cookie specifically, the dog would just start digging and just shove her head into the dirt. I mean, just like <laughs> forceful. Like that has to hurt your nose. And just get in there and just... <laughs> and then f- smell which way the mole was digging and then f- keep following the mole via smell. It's kind of fun to watch. Really? Yeah. Every now and then she'd scare the mole up to the top of the earth again and then you could see the, the mole burrowing. No way. Yeah, it was like it was like when a needle's under your skin or like something. Like a trimmer in the... In yeah, the... it's like, oh, it's just barely under this it. This sounds cool. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I got to get some dogs and some land. You got to get mole memories. You should play a... <laughs> They gotta have a human versus mole show. You gotta <laughs> dig, dig through life size ground. And, and Clifford <laughs> is trying to catch yeah. me. That's great. All right, I'm gonna let's let's just end it there on memory lane. All right, that was fun. Yeah, thanks thanks for sharing some good idea, Brian. Some, uh, some ideas, guys. A fun little something. Yeah, a little memory lane. Let us know if you guys have any mole stories, <laughs> <laughs> skin or animal. Um, cool. Re- review of the week. Yeah, let's do it. Review of the week. This one comes from Brooke M E W. Brooke Mew. Mew. Love the show. Y'all are hilarious. I listen to you in the car or in the bath. Yes, I take baths. Do we have that? Dark bath. Dark bath. Are the lights on, Brooke? Oh. <laughs> I found out about your podcast because I follow Trey on Instagram and it came across a tag Jake was tagged in. Fun. I don't know how old that must have been. Tag. Tag. Tagged your tagged in. Tagged your tagged in. It was Kurt's <laughs> opinions. Anyway, love y'all. Looking forward to new episodes. That's my friend, Brooke. Uh Brant Blodgett, five-star yep. review from Traverse City, Bob Evans. 
This week on Schmores, Brad said, I don't think Bob Evans have any brick and mortar locations, but I would like to inform you that Traverse City, Michigan has one. Every time I drive by, I wonder how it's still open, but I've been a few times and there's always a wait because of the plethora of old couples eating there. Anyway, thanks so much for doing the pod and you make me laugh every week. Well, thanks, Brant. That's I, I've got a quite a few pushbacks on the Bob Evans. <laughs> it's amazing the things that like rub people like, dude, Bob Evans is amazing. Dude, I love the podcast, but what you said about Bob was not right. I, I almost <laughs> stopped listening when you defamed Bob Evans name like that. <laughs> so fun. All right. Uh Brad, mm-hmm. Timon's version. Mm-hmm. Would you like to end up with the so with a jingle? Mm-hmm. Let me find it. Me, uh, YouTube, or you, YouTube, Timon? I got it. All right. <laughs> I'll do it. How are we going to... Well, we'll figure out time. This one's from Katie Bennett. Uh, Friday, January 14th, uh, 2022. <laughs> All right. Fun. Here it goes. Hey, I changed clothes. Uh, in the middle of the jingle last episode, the power just went out. Uh, so that's why you heard an interruption. But... Ta-da! This is the end of the episode. We'll see you Wednesday. Support our sponsors. Buy Friday Pickleball Paddle. Um, leave a comment for Timon since he's homeschooled. Help him learn. This is all a business. We're yes. people helping people. See you Wednesday. Ghost Runners Podcast.